Welcome back everybody to Onyx Dragon Gaming. It's a new week for some new hobby. Uh, let's get to it. So, we were going to be painting some good news and bad news today. We were going to be painting more Night Goblins for the Old World with its awesome release that's just happened over the weekend. I've seen so many awesome things on social media from all different people getting super excited the Old World's back. But unfortunately, clearly with all the busyness that's been going on there and the vagaries of warp travel, uh, the Night Goblins have not made it to us. So, unfortunately, we are kind of a little bit of limbo waiting for them to arrive. Fingers crossed they'll be here tomorrow or failing that first thing Wednesday, which we, so we should be back on track for Wednesday's stream. But in the meantime, what is it that we are going to be doing? Uh, we are going to be painting something completely different. We're going to be doing some Eldar Striking Scorpions. Now... I didn't know what to do tonight, I was a bit panicking, so, and I, just, I decided, you know what, I got the Kill Team Salvation Box, I messed about with the scouts and things, and I've got, I was just, I know what, I'm just, these striking scorpions are going to sit there and do nothing, if I don't do something with them. Now, Eldar are one of my favourite armies of all time, uh, and my personal Ulthway army uh, usually gets added to by about one, or maybe even two units per year. Um, and this year's unit <laughs> is going to be some of the brand new striking scorpions, like I said. Um, I've prepped them at home by spraying them black and then painting them with some warpstone glow so that we don't just have a boring basic thing, dream of, for the first hour of me just painting them green. Uh, so they are now ready to go. Now, for me, I think the key when it comes to painting Aspect Warriors is that they've got very defined colours. Uh, for their aspects. So like with your Dark Reapers, they're obviously black with purples and, and dark colours like that. Uh, Howling Banshees are bone. Um, Warp Spiders are red. Uh, and Striking Scorpions are sort of a bright green with yellow. Uh, so to personalise them to the different craft world factions that you maybe have out there, my personal one, my personal favourite is the Ulthway craft world, which I've brought in one of the models from my, from my uh, army which is my spirits here. So you can see this is the scheme I go for. I know it's really surprising that it's mostly black and red, right? So this the, the key, I think, to making Aspect Warriors look like they fit in your particular craft world, your army, is going to be on the details. So as we go, we're going to be painting the basic army. I'm shocked, yeah, I bet you are. I bet you are. Like, I'm sure you're completely shocked to see that they're mostly black. But the key is going to be to making these guys stand out and making them... Uh, but also making them look like they're part of the same army whole is going to be painting some of the various details on them in similar colours. So for these guys, obviously you can see this is a spirit seer. He's got mostly bone uh, and black are the main colours. But we have like reds, especially on the gemstones and on the uh, sash there. And we also, on some of my other models that you can't really see, but on the optic of this one is more of a, a bro the metallics I use tend to be more of a brass or a bronzy colour. So that's the details we're going to be using on them. But to start off with, we're just going to start with the basic armour. So, without further ado, let's put some paint on some plastic. So, first up, we are going to wash the, uh, the armour with some of our favourite null oil. And I hope you can see that I have managed to delve deep into the Archaeotech that is the settings for this stream and I finally figured out how to flip the camera so I can actually now hold up paints to this camera and you can read them rather than having to read it backwards um, it's also a bit more easier on my brain as I'm not looking at a stream of myself doing things backwards so let's get to it let's get to it so we are going to put this null oil wash we're just going to go all over this um, the striking scorpion to start with I was trying to like normally when I'm doing things like this, I yes, I know exactly right. Uh, fancy is definitely the key. Um, normally, when I do things like this, I would pin wash. So, this is like a space ring, for example. I'd normally you may put knowledge from the dark, <laughs> exactly, that's exactly what it is. Welcome, welcome, uh, as well. There, near Reaper. Um, so yeah, this this is uh, as I was saying, normally, if I was going to be doing space marines, I would go around and what's called pin wash. So I would just be trying to get in all of just the various recesses and leaving all the other panels behind. But the thing with Eldar is they have such um, 
sort of sometimes quite soft edges and things. Although these actually always are great because they have extra plates on them. Um, that it's just so much quicker to go around and wash the whole model and then come back in and sort of re-highlight the panels. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Also, it means we can get a bit more of a uh, where the softer things, like the undersuit, for example, as you can see on his magnificent butt cheeks here, um, the undersuit, we can get a bit more of a curve look to it if we just, uh, if we can, we can effectively highlight the, uh, the green with the original warpstone glow that I was using. So, also, it takes, it's so easy just to don't get in there, splash it all on. I'm just making sure that I don't let it pull too much in any of the recess, in any of the sort of areas that aren't recesses. So that A, it dries quicker, and B, uh, it doesn't leave massive pools that are going to tint big flat areas because they are a bit of a pain to uh, overcome. So I'm going to try and remember, as I said, it's every stream, and if I keep saying it to myself enough, might actually do it, um, which is to keep the model in view of you lovely people at all times. So yes, let's talk about let's talk about what's happened at the weekend. This weekend finally saw the release of the old world, um, and like I said at the start, at the top of the stream, it's so exciting to have it back. It seems like there's so many folks out there who are just as excited as I am to see the return of the world of fantasy. Um, I know several of my friends are super stoked. Um, we were chatting about it last night. Um, I have a bunch of friends around on a Sunday night. Currently, it used to have an excuse to watch American football, so we were watching the, play the playoffs last night, but now we're turning it into more of a hobby night as well as the season's winding down. Um, it's great to have it sit around, with big, big um, round table discussions and all, all sorts of things. Um, and there was a couple of my friends painting um, painting old world things, getting getting their feet wet. Um, yeah, exactly. Thank you, thank you, Bastian. Yeah, I did. I, we we sat down. I used my vast knowledge of elven armies, even though I've not picked up the, the uh, had a chance to play this edition. I'm just going on my knowledge of previous armies to uh, kind of give people a bit of an insight of what I would I would be doing as a good basis. Um, I've seen a lot of people discuss online the rules and say, oh, this, does this mean that this type of unit or this type of unit is no longer viable in this game and whatever? Yeah, the Black Library of my brain, yes. Um, just as archaic and wondrous, although I wish it had a bit more, a few more guardians keeping it together. Um, yeah, I see a lot of people online discussing the game and saying, oh, this is not no longer working because I've read this rule and blah, blah, blah. We haven't had a chance to really get it on the table and rattle some dice. Um, and see what the games are like because it's one thing reading rule books I found over my years many many years in this hobby is it's all well and good theory crafting with uh, things and you see it all the time you see it in like all sorts of games um, computer games when there's a patch announced or uh, card games especially something like Magic the Gathering there'll be a new set announced and people will do loads of content on I think this card's going to be amazing and this card's going to be broken or this card's going to be useless and whatever. And until it gets out in the wild and people get a chance to physically play with it, we're not going to know. So whilst I can give some advice based on what I know of fantasy, because it's mostly based off of um, old editions of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, uh, we won't know until we get to the tabletop what does and doesn't work. So for my, my own personal thing, I am using... My old, my ancient, like I said, the black, my black library of knowledge, to um, go with what I know, what my, what I know, go for a nice balanced all round army with some stuff that I love, like I like, like I usually do, and then we will wait and see. We'll get those on the tabletop, and we will have a chance to see what genuinely works and what is utterly useless, because one of the big nuances when it comes to old world that's a bit different to say something like forty k. So in 40k, you might think, oh, do I want a five-man unit or something? Or do I want a ten-man unit or something? That, that's one thing of it. That's definitely an, an aspect. But it goes even further in Warhammer Fantasy because you have to think about how they're going to rank up, how these units are going to rank up, uh, and how many, how big a frontage do you want? Do you want, I always go for the classic five across because 
it's beautiful symmetry, and that's the important. For me, that's what's, that's what's most important, is uh, is the symmetry. It means you can have the banner in the middle, the champion to one side, the musician to the other side, and then an equal number of guys to either side. Um, but I've heard some people say that six is the new best frontage to be using, using the game. Um, obviously, then my brain goes, well, why not seven? Because then we can have a nice, uh, even amount again. Um, but again, we, until we've played a few games, we won't know. So I'm basing everything off of my, my favourite five-man frontage, and that's what I'm sort of advising people to do. And, I, and like I said, I'm super, super soaked, so, super soaked, super stoked to get back to, to actually playing the game. Um, because whilst I have played a lot of uh, 40k, and especially Heresy over the last few few years, my, my number one gaming love always was Warhammer Fantasy. And it's the only game that I got, I think I would say, personally, the only game that I think I got any actually good at. Um, I can hold my own in a game of 40k, I can hold my own in a game of Necromunda, or uh, Heresy or whatever it might be, but when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy, I'd say I've got a pretty pretty good mind for the game. Um, so I am really excited to have it back and start playing. Um, there was another awesome bit of info that's dropped today. Um, we finally have the legacy army lists are now live. So as you can imagine, before the stream this afternoon, when that dropped, I was frantically writing myself some new new lists and trying not to go absolutely hog wild with different hobby projects um, and be sensible. So I started off with my beloved Dark Elves um, because they have a lot of newer models, which I absolutely love. Um, but being me, I can't just have them and paint them. No, 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 no. I have to go back into the annals of history. And uh, <coughs> one of the thing, one of the, my my favorite era when I picked up Dark Elves was the sixth edition. Again, when they had quite a dark, it was an era. It was around the same as third edition of Fountains Forty K, third, fourth edition of Fountains Forty K. They had quite a dark look to them. Um, so I am leaning into those paint schemes for my Dark Elves. I already have a bunch of them painted. If you check out our social media, uh, on Extra Dragon Gaming social media, over on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and the Book of Face, um, you can see some of the un the units and uh, models I've already painted, ready, ready, and waiting for this edition, so this new edition of the game to drop. Um, I, my personal favorite, I think, of the ones I've done so far is my Dark Elf Sorceress. Um, that I can, it's a, it's a slight conversion, but I converted it from one of the Warhammer Underworlds uh, warbands, uh, the Daughters of Cain. I want to say that's the, the faction name. I don't know enough about Age of Sigmar, um, but obviously they were a bit, they're witch elves in my, in my eyes. Um, so the leader of that particular uh, warband, I chopped off her staff tip um, and replaced it with one from the Black Dragon. Uh, kit, which has a high sorceress, is one of the options mounted on top. Um, and as luck would have it, I built my black dragon to have my dreadlord on it, um, which I cannot wait to rebase and get on the tabletop. Um, my friend Alex has already challenged me to a game with his ogres, um, so fingers crossed my order of uh, new old world bases will be here sometime this week, and I'll be can frantically rebase all of my units onto 25s and the various other sizes that are required uh, so we can get a game in. So I'll be bringing you news of how my Valiant campaigners have fared when we've had that game. Um, but yeah, so I, I, like I said, I'm super stoked. I was writing an army list um, featuring all my favourites. Um, big unit of Black Guard of Nagaroth. Obviously my Dreadlord on his mighty Black Dragon. Um, some... Dark Elf Reaper Bolt Throwers, because you've got to have some of those. Um, and some Cold One Knights, because again, they're such a classic uh, staple. And they can have full plate mail now! They're like proper... I mean, to be fair, the thing that always used to set Dark Elf Cold One Knights, they used to have heavier armour anyway, because your the uh, Cold Ones themselves always used to count as barded. So you get an extra plus one save from them because of their thick reptilian hides. Um, and I've, I've, I had a go, I had this quick test model the other week, as I want to do. Uh, I have painted up a test model for 
my cold one night and I'm very very pleased with how he came out so I am looking forward to painting up the other four because thankfully small units because one of the things I think that, that killed Warhammer Fantasy I might have spoken about this in the past but I think for me one of the things I think that killed Warhammer Fantasy especially when I was talk talking to friends what is the fact that back in the day towards the edition armies used to be huge now I have no problem with having a huge army if I've collected if I've collected uh, a force for so long I want to have mass huge regiments of things but if I want to play a game and I want to start a new new one get people in or you want people playing the daunting prospect of painting two three hundred miniatures for a force is so hard for people it's so hard and I, and I don't blame and you know and also financially like if you've got to buy like 50 guys and that's just your one core regiment that's going to be a bit tough so, as these fellows are drying, um, I've realised I've missed a little bit here and there. We may have to break out the old Happy Hobby hair dryer already, just to give these a little bit of a, a helping hand. So here's our friend, and I shall just mute everybody so you don't hear the whine of the hair dryer. So one, two, three. And we're back. I think maybe I need to invest in some hold music for when I do the help your hair dryer, so you guys can have something lovely and soothing and not at all sleep inducing um, to keep you company whilst I'm blasting away with a hair dryer. Um, but anyway, more importantly, we've got most of uh, most of these guys dry now. Like I say, I'm not trying to go too mad on them because I don't want them to uh, end up clogging with. The, uh, the wash when it's pulled a little bit where I haven't noticed but I'm going to say that I've got a couple of bits to wick away here on this guy but I'm going to call that a success and now I'm going to add some fun bits so what have I done with aha uh -huh, here it is so we're going to go back to doo -doo 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 -doo, some warpstone glow to uh paint back in the yellow panels. As you can see, I've also side upgraded my uh, my palette here uh, to a tile, um, which I found under the, in a random cupboard in my house. And I was like, ooh, random tiles, excellent. Somebody here must have been a hobbyist or been trying to, you know, tile the kitchen or something. Um, I love using basic ceramic tiles as a, as a sort of uh, paint, How's the word just completely gone out of my head? I literally said it about two minutes ago. Palette, that's the word I'm looking for. I knew I'd get there eventually. Um, as a paint palette, because they're easily washable. Whether you can you can bug them in a, in a dishwasher um, or in a, some hot water and the paint will eventually peel off, which is great. Um, and they're nice and smooth as well, which is good, because then that means they don't, if, you, if you're trying to sort of water down paint on things, you want a nice smooth surface so things don't disappear. Um, so we're just going to go back round a bunch of these arm panels and just reapply our warpstone glow. Now warpstone glow is such a bright green that we are going to have to probably do a couple of a couple of thin coats um, to make sure we've got a nice smooth finish that's not too translucent but it shouldn't take too long so and also again it means we're using a couple of coats we can help extend our nice smooth areas uh, we can make that nice curve of highlight remember it's like I always like I say it's always better to add more paint than take you can't so you can add more paint than it is to take it away so we're just going to go Whizzing across. I think with the new, with the amount of detail on these guys, what we'll probably end up doing is just going doing going through one whole scorpion. 
on this stream as opposed to back to even. Even though I've put the wash on on uh, four of these guys, I think what we'll end up doing is probably painting this fellow as near to completion as we can um, because there's a lot of him to do. And you don't want to be sitting here watching me paint the exact same colour over the exact same model for about four hours. So yeah, as where were we? So, Old World, yes. I'm really excited for the Legacy Army's back. Um, I, I, again, it's one of the sadder decisions that Games Workshop have made with the Old World to say that these aren't going to be tournament legal, tournament viable, which I think is a bit silly considering the game is right in its infancy right now um, and uh, a bunch of people still have old armies or actually more importantly <laughs> with get, to get access to new armies using some of the ones that the, the ones that they are are technically legacy armies are really surprisingly the same ones that have uh, all their models are in age of sigma it's a weird coincidence that there's definitely nothing to read into that at all um into why that they're not fully legal in the in in the old world um but i've said before i think if we can if we can be vocal enough online um, and tournament organisers and stuff like that, maybe we will convince the people up top that actually you could make a lot more money if you let us use them in this game. Because worst comes to the worst, we'll buy two armies and put one on round bases and one on square bases so we can use them in both. Shock horror. Um, but... You know, more importantly, I think most people are going to end up using the old world. Um, in my opinion, that might just be my my hoary old veteran brain talking, but I, I genuinely believe that uh, the old world is going to be more successful than uh, than Age of Sigma. Um, hashtag controversial opinion, because um, I think the thing is, there's a lot a lot of people out there have a lot of fond memories which helps form the basis of a community. Um, and I think the lore is a lot easier to get into. Um, I've tried really hard with Age of Sigmar several times to get into the game uh, and into the, into the lore behind it. Because for me, it's lore that makes a game exciting. Um, and it's, that's the thing that makes me want to do, to be involved. Um, I've tried listening to audiobooks, I've tried reading the the various uh, things that come out for A C Martin and, and I just haven't found anything that allows me to pierce the veil um, and want to you know and get super excited about it and its factions because there's just too much of the world that's unknown to us. Um, but that being said, I've also played it a few times. Um, because it was the fancy game for a while, and the game itself is good. You know, there's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of dedicated um, players out there at Age of Sigma, and I'm not going to knock them for that. Um, I know it's a very good competitive system. Um, it, you know, it's well It can be relatively well balanced amongst itself, its various factions. Um, but I think at the same time, I also feel like. That means there's not as it's now kind of distilled itself down to being a competitive game, and I have gone down that road before. And for me, down that road, madness lies. Again, I'm not knocking you if that's what you love. If you want to win tournaments and fight for the prestige of uh, being known as one of the best players in the world of something, you go right ahead. I'm I'm not going to stop you, and I'm going to encourage you as best I can. But uh, for me, I found when I started playing games really competitively, it turned me into a bit of an ass. Um, even, when I was, even when I was playing what I would consider a casual game, I was still looking for every minute advantage, every scrap of, you know, any time my, my opponent might be like, oh, I think I'm, 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 am I in range for this thing? Well, I think you're, you know, maybe a millimetre or so out, so... No, you can't have it, um, you know, because that's what you have to be like to be in a competitive system. You have to you have to play like that because you need every single advantage you can get, um, but especially at the more higher level you get anyway, I should say. 
Um, we have a bunch of lovely competitive gamers um, in our local uh, area at both Harlequins Gaming, Harlequins Games, and Lady Dragon Gaming. Um, we have some lovely guys who are who love to play competitively and love to win, but they're also absolutely f great to hang out with, great people, really fun, um, and I enjoy hanging out with them. And I go to the, those are my guys that I go to when I'm trying to find when I need to go to find an army an army list that uh, I can take to an event that I won't just lose every game automatically to in the deployment phase. Um, but I said, for me, uh, personally, when I went down the competitive thing and I wanted to win events, I am a bit of a bad, bad competitive guy. I, I'm one of those people that you hear horrible stories about if I'm getting too into it, because I need to win. I want to win so badly, um, if that's why I'm going. Um, and yeah, so I had to realize, to realize it the hard way that actually I needed to, to stop. But, you know, I say we learn these things and we find our niche. And my niche is mostly painting models. Um, and hopefully once again, playing in the old world with rank upon rank of uh, fantasy races that just uh, when I, I took the pictures of the night goblins we painted last week earlier and again you can see those on our our social media platforms I painted I put them up on, on our social media platforms earlier today uh, and again they are oh, there's just something so satisfying about ranked up units that you just don't get uh, with other games um, it's just, yeah, it's just there's that thing with all seeing all the sort of spears, you know, all hefted, all the ranks of, of shields, or you know, archers all drawing and knocking their bows. Oh, it's just it's just so cool. It, it it definitely reaches down deep inside to the the child part of my brain and just says, line them all up again, line them all up. Because like I said, I, I spent most of my formative years in this hobby just putting rank upon rank of uh, of archers and sword and uh, spearmen out on my tabletop um, and, and, and looking matching them up and making them symmetrical regiments left and left and right um, and that was that was that was most of my hobby for a long time that and reading every white dwarf I could get my hands on um, this is why I have a massive collection. Yeah, you can you can see in my when I do my sort of face cam, you can see the the the, the army books and rule books and things that I have collection behind me. But uh, I also have another secret library, library uh, mostly because I couldn't put it. <laughs> Four hundred white dwarfs take up a lot of space, uh, so I had to put them somewhere else <laughs> in the house. Um, but yeah, they are they are also a massive, valuable go to resource. Right in time, I have a um, a project idea in mind, um, and uh, yeah, so I, I go and use them, and go back and visit nostalgia all the time. Especially now that, like I said, now that the old world's back, I'm going back and looking at old battle reports and and armies that they were using in them uh, to get a sort of vague idea of things I want to do, um, whilst at the same time trying to balance that off with. Knowing that money and time are both important commodities that I have to consider, um, as much as I may not want to. Um, so yeah. So like I said, it's strange that we're talking. I'm talking so much about the old world on a stream which is primarily focused on uh, 40k models. But let's be fair, Eldar are just elves in space, so. Although at this point they have taken on much more of a life of their own. Um, like I said before, they're one of my favourite races in uh, in 40k. Um, the Ulfway Crowthwild, the home of Eldred Ulthren, the great seer of his people, um, and the militarised Black Guardians uh, of Ulfway. This is what they're known for. So normally, Guardian, Eldar, the Eldar armies are mostly made up of uh, the Aspect Warriors. So these are people who, these are Eldar who have dedicated 
this particular portion, portion of their lives to the path of the warrior um, as a way to resolve various uh, inner feelings and whatnot, rather than let them take them, o take them over. So whereas you and I would probably go to doctors and or a mental health professional and work through uh, various things, the old I'll say, well, you've got some very you've got a lot of anger issues there. Here, have have this armored suit and these weapons and go 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 murder the enemies of our people. Um, so yeah, they're supposed to be the primary uh, defense. They are the sort of primary go to. When it comes to uh, when the Eldar fight, are the Aspect Shrines. However, um, as things get more desperate, the citizen levies, so the, your various archers, poets, merchants, whatever, they are all um, brought together, and a lot of them have either trod the path of the warrior before, or they have a little bit of training. And these are these are your guardians. So they're they're mostly um, just sort of militias that are being brought together. In times of desperation, but uh, when it comes to Ulthway, because Ulthway hung around a long time. See, these craft wars that the, the Elder are massive trading ships the, the, of the older Elder Empire, and uh, they can obviously move wherever they want. But uh, Ulthway spent a lot of its time in uh, close proximity to the Eye of Terror, which meant it has a lot of it gets a lot it gets a, a, attacked a lot. Um, and also has a lot of psychic energy flowing around it, which is why it's known for its seers and its almost standing army of guardians at this point. Um, so, yeah, that's why they're, they're, famed, they're called the Black Guardians. And uh, in the game terms, they were the same as your regular unit of guardians, but they used to have better weapon skill or and or ballistic skill, depending on whether they were guardian defenders, which are the guys with the shuriken catapults. Uh, which is the main type of gun that the Elder employ, that fire monomolecular discs at people. A um, bit like, uh, yeah, your sort of ninja shuriken that you've probably seen on many an anime or, or and or movie. Um, and yeah, or they, were, they would have improved weapon skill if they were part of the Guardian Storm Squads, which are a close assault... Um, variant of the Guardians who have swords and shuriken pistols or chainsaws, a bit like the striking sword pieces but nowhere near as good um, yeah they would have like I said, they, they had improved weapon skill or ballistic skill depending on which one of those whether they were suited for shooting or suited for combat um, uh, back in the day they used to have a when the Eye of Terror campaign was a thing those older veterans, they remember that. Uh, there was you. They they wrote. They had a specific um, army list called the Web by Strike Force, which was uh, when uh, Abaddon was attacking uh, Kadia the first time round. Um, Elrond was trying to sort of head him off at the pass by sending these strike forces through the webway uh, to people. Which meant the cool thing was the thing I loved about it most was the was the limitations you put on your army. Um, so you could have like guardian. Uh, Black Guardians and things like that you have loads of those uh, and anything Guardian powered that was in the army so like support weapon batteries or war walkers these are all these units were, were things you could use but you were limited to 0 to 1 aspect squad of aspect warriors and you couldn't have any tanks because the pathways in the webway that the army was using were too small and I always liked that I thought it was a cool idea for because I think restrictions make uh, for some really entertaining um, army selections um, or deck selections if you play a magic. I think any kind of restriction really make, opens up whole new possibilities and adds a lot of lots of layers and things when certain things can and can't be taken. You have to rely, you can't just go to clutch units sometimes uh, or clutch cards. So yeah, my Ultway army that I'm currently in the process of building um, is kind of leaning towards that. So I've got, as these are my favourite aspect, the only aspect warriors I'm going to have in the whole army are going to be this unit of striking scorpions and hopefully when he is released which i'm assuming will be when these guys get released separately there'll be an awesome release next to it of their phoenix lord 
Karanras, uh, and I cannot wait to see what GW can do with him. Uh, after seeing both Jane Zarr, the uh, Phoenix Lord of the Howling Banshees, and uh, Morgan Ra of the uh, Death, uh, Dark Reapers, oh, Karanras, I cannot. Oh, just I'm just so so all so excited to see what he, what he looks like. Um, yeah, so. This guy, we're getting close to uh, the first layer, relayering the uh, striking the warpstone glow. I should say, and he said striking scorpion green. That's an old old paint from back in the mists of time. Um, we're nearly there with that first layer, so we can start working on some of the more awesome fun details. Because uh, there are the the other primary color that uh, scorpions are associated with is yellow. So I don't know how you can see so much on here, but you can see there's some of these raised ridges on the armor, like down the leg here. These are gonna be uh, yellow. And they're gonna, that's quite fun, because they, they mean they, they're gonna stand out quite nicely from the rest of the armor. And then after we've done those major colors, that's when we start, then we're gonna start adding in uh, the details that are going to really make it sell like it's part of Craft World Altway and not, for example, say Beal Tan or Sam Hain or Iandon, Luganoth, uh, Altansar. I'm just reaming off Craft World names because I can. Because, like I said, these are random bits of information stored in my brain, and if I don't share them, nobody will. So there you go. You come over painting and you get random random historical facts from Games Workshop. Uh, one of the other thing hell is this. Yeah, I know. I, I've been asking the same question. Where are the goblins? Um, I was hoping they would be here today. I was hoping that the, the Games Workshop would have been able to uh, send the order through the various warp storms rattling the UK right now. That's what I choose to call them. And we would be uh, painting more nitroids. Well, more importantly, we paint squigs. Because I really want... Yeah, your dwarves have obviously scared. <laughs> so it is. You man paints ten iron drakes and that's it. Dwarves for life. Um, clearly, that's what it is. Um, but no, uh, they, didn't get, they didn't get hit. I held out hope till the very last minute that they would be here in time for me to uh, get and build and uh, spray ready for tonight's stream. But sadly, they have not arrived and I am mighty sad about this. Um, I said, here's hoping they are here tomorrow. But uh, like I said, I don't know. I, as, soon as, I, as soon as I find out, as soon as I've been told, I will race over to Lazy Drag Gaming Oh, hey, James. I see you a bit later than usual. Normally you're here right on six o'clock, but no, it's nice to see you. Hi there, buddy. My littlest friend, James, there. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, as soon as I know when they get here, we will be straight back to work on the Night Goblins because, after, like I said, after seeing the unit we did last week all ranked up, I am so fired up for painting more of them. Uh, and someone just get ready for Uncle Ben. Getting ready for bed, Uncle. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. See, maybe when you get when you get the older, you can watch the rest of the stream. <laughs> but for now, I love the fact that you come in and say hello every week, and I always say I was try and say hello back. So get yourself to bed. <laughs> so you're ready for school again tomorrow. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, no, we'll get back to the old world as soon as we possibly can, because the not only are we waiting for uh, Night Goblins to arrive, we're also waiting, with bated breath, for the Bretonians and Tomb Kings stuff to arrive um, at Lazy Dragon. And s as soon as that, again, as soon as that happens... Other videos will be going live, so not just on stream, but uh, we will be making our first ever 
YouTube exclusive video where myself and uh, good friend Alistair Arms will be descending upon Lazy Dragon Gaming to collect our old world order and to finally decide once and for all who is painting what. Um, will I be painting the, the host of the Scorpion King of Nomads? Uh, or will I be painting the Valiant Forces of the Dukedom of Canals? I believe that's how it's pronounced. I did French at school, but that was a disturbingly long time ago. So my pronunciation is probably awful. <laughs> but, I, but like I said, I'm very, very excited to, to get my hands on that new set. Um, my friend Josh was uh, was building his Bretonians last night at our hobby hobby gathering, and it was it was hard not to look over with with a little bit of jealousy at his uh, huge pile of uh, plastics. I'm especially excited to paint the characters in the sets, um, either that awesome new bone dragon, which I want to kind of paint more as a, I think I'll probably take the wings off. And paint it as a crocodile, if it's if that's what I'm asking us to do, or well, what well, I'm probably hope I'll be honest, I'm hoping for a little bit more, is if uh, I get to paint the Bretonians, I get to paint that awesome duke or baron on Pegasus, a royal Pegasus. I am very, that is such a gorgeous model. If you if you've seen it in the flesh, wow. If that's going to be the state of new miniatures for for the old world, I am going to be beside myself when we get to uh, the new, the, there are some of the other races that I love. Um, I'm hoping that we, we've seen the uh, the Orcs were announced this week, weekend, as the next release faction for old world, coming soon, TM. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping they're going to get a new, a new box kit. Uh, we still have all their sort of old stuff that's coming back, and more more importantly, some of the e the really really old stuff that's coming back. Uh, I'm I'm very excited to see that the made to order sections that they're doing for these armies. Oh, they're trawling the vaults. They really are bringing us some absolute classics. Um, so saying that we're bringing we're getting the the night goblin. Sorry, not the night goblin. We're going to be getting the Marauder Giant from 1993 with the big beard and the and the club. That is going to be so cool. Um, but also, this opens up questions as to what we're going to see from some of the other factions in the main tour section. I am personally hoping with all of my heart that one of my favourite miniatures of all time, the uh, Forest Dragon, will be done as a main tour order kit. Not the one with the twins on, but the one with the original OG one with the dark with the high elf, uh, wood elf lord on top. That I am I am hoping and willing, with all my uh, fervor, that that is going to be on the made to order, and that will definitely be something that I will be ordering myself, um, as it was the model that I always aspired to have in my wood elf collection when I was a kid. Um, and never did. Um, I've gotten close over the years with a few versions of it and then I've ended up sitting on them and then ended up passing them on to people who are more likely to do something with them. But uh, yeah, that that kit comes back. That will definitely be, we will definitely be painting that on stream, I can tell you that now. <laughs> um, yeah, sculptured by the Magnificent Trish Morrison, the mother of monsters. Um, it's awesome seeing a lot of her work come back into the fold. Um, and I have to say, I've been looking on her website, on her own new miniatures line. Um, and I think I may have to get... I'm definitely going to be getting her, her one of her tree men to put in my uh, wood elf force, because they look so cool. And I've always loved that style. The new tree man, the plastic one's really cool. But personally, th th there's no something about... The classic Wood Elf Tree Men, like the original Durthu um, and his compatriots, and the really grumpy looking Tree Man, 
he was awesome. Right, so back to painting in the 41st millennium. Uh, we are going back over the weapons and also the face mask for the striking scorpions because this is again this is a great color to use uh, we're going to be using because it stands out quite black is a one of my favorite ways to paint weapons <laughs> yes surprising I go no um, it's an easy one it's easy to touch up after metal work and things like that and also it helped in this particular case using the black here is going to help it tie into the colors for craft world Altway which is part of our next job is trying to make this guy uh, tie his cool scheme into that of craft, the Craftwood Elfway forces that I've already painted. So, yes. If you want to know more about the Striking Scorpions, again, my favourite aspect, uh, there is a brilliant book by Gav Thorpe called The Path of the Warrior, um, which really, again, one of the things I love about Gav's writing is he really feels like he's pulling back the sort of cover and pe and exposing, like looking through, taking taking lore that was written for the game and expanding upon it, rather than taking the setting and kind of disappearing off in new directions, which some authors do, which is cool. And don't get me wrong, there are some absolutely awesome books out there uh, by various notable authors that do such things. But there's just something about the way Gav writes. He almost because he used to be a games developer. I think he sort of writes as an excuse to to fill in some of these the holes that you couldn't always get to in a codex. Um, and Part of the Warrior especially is really cool as it takes us... Um, I can't remember the name of the character off the top of my head because Eldar names are really hard to remember. But he uh, it takes him through him being an artisan, um, a craftsman, and he kind of gets a bit upset and angry um, with some of his friends and compatriots. I think it's over a girl. Um, and this, and he is then kind of ushered down the path of the warrior to uh, help him deal with these, these feelings. And then ultimately he ends up uh, trapped on the path and becomes an exarch. So... For those people who aren't aware, the the various aspects of uh, the aspect warriors are aspects of the god, Eldar god Kalamenja Kane, and the thousand and one ways in which he can kill. It has other one aspects of him as different ways to kill you, um, and one the thing is you go down the path of a warrior, you learn how to fight. You like I say you deal with some of these emotions, more negative emotions, and then eventually you can. Uh, leave them behind. So they have this uh, tradition of the war mask where that's why they're always pictured as helmeted um, and why the new Inari ones don't have the helmets is because part of the ritual of them being able to go into war and be able to unleash their rage and anger is to don ceremonially the war mask um, which is symbolised by putting on the helmet and then they go into war and then they can act out these feelings and use them in a productive way and then when they come back they can take it off and go back to their regular life, and not, you know, the thing. But sometimes people cannot let those feelings go, and they end up being trapped on the path um, of the warrior, and that's how you become an exarch. Um, exarchs are the eternal guardians of the various aspect shrines. They're like, they have like little chapels and um, uh, sort of training areas all across the craft world. And uh, yeah, so in the book, is one of the things he explains is that when he gets trapped, he tries to go back to his artifact shrine and his ex that he's been following basically kicks him out and tells him he has to find his own shrine now. So he goes off and finds an old dilapidated ex shrine and uh, he sort of goes in there and he finds the, the armour of the old previous ex and dons it and then it's revealed to him like... How exarchs operate is they are actually an agglomeration of all of the previous exarchs. So when Eldar die, they are spirits are taken into spirit stones, or they will carry one on their chest. Um, but the exarchs, those spirit stones, are, are left within the suit. 
um, of armor, and the kind of personalities all blend into one. So the ex- so the character sort of takes on more of the personality of the first exarch of that particular shrine, mixed with all the others that have come since, um, and sort of loses a little bit of his identity, which is part of the tragedy of becoming an exarch. Um, so yeah, and then it's yeah the next step up from that is the Phoenix Lords, who were the original Exarchs, with the exception of the Dragon Scorpions, which is something we'll go into in more detail somewhere else. But uh, the the Phoenix Lords are eternal, hence the the Phoenix in their name, um, and they can regenerate sometimes if they're near death by they touch another Exarch or another Dragon Scorpion, they can absorb them to become. But unlike Exarchs, where they are a blend of all. The personalities, um, the Phoenix Lords have one overriding personality, and then when they absorb somebody else, they kind of just get their memories, and that's it. So, right, I think for these we're going to need El Tiny Rocho um, for. We're going to try and do the yellow, the yellow uh, bands on the armor, help them stand out a bit more. So we're going to go in on the leg here with some Avalon Sunset, a nice strong yellow to start as a base. Um, again, this is a re- well, I don't say relatively easy. I mean, it is when you've got a decent sized brush because the detail is quite nice and raised. We don't have to draw them on, thankfully, because that would suck. <laughs> so. We're just going to go in and find there's a couple on the crotch here. Lovely place to have chevrons on your crotch. Um, so you can tell, as you can always tell when I'm really concentrating, my brain shuts down its vocal processors in an attempt to help me paint finer and finer hi- highlights on lines. Um, so yeah, and we've got these two on the feet. Just gonna pick up. But, yeah, all of of all the uh, aspects, I don't know. The, the different as- elder aspects are all really cool in their own in their own ways. Um, all of the major aspects, because um, I said there's supposed to be that supposedly there's thousands of them. Um, but the major aspects we have um, perform ver- perform various different battlefield roles. Um, and one of the close-up ones that I love, I love the, the like I said, the Strikers Gorgons are my all-time favourites. So these are quite heavily armoured by um, Eldar standards, and they, they're they designed to kill sort of hordes of troops. So the two main close combat uh, aspects we have currently are the Striking Scorpions and the Howling Banshees. So the Howling Banshees are literally what they do, they say, they are... Uh, they use a psychic scream as they charge in. It kind of disorients their prey. They're good. They're good for going after. They're supposed to go after heavy infantry um, and elite units. And they have power weapons that can slice through any armor. And they scream, disorientate you, get in. Bet they're flipping and uh, using all their agility and acrobatics. And they try and get in and kill you before you get a chance to strike back. Um, whereas the striking scorpions um, are more. They, they wait in the shadows. So one of their cool r- r- rules used to be they could appear out of the shadowed parts of terrain in game. They could just mysteriously appear or fade into the shadows and appear in another piece of terrain. Um, and they, as I said, they're a lot heavier armoured because they, whilst they appear and they suddenly attack you, um, but they have chainsaws. They must designed to go through light armoured guys, lots of you. Lots of them. They've also got these cool things on their helmets called mandiblasters, which are sort of a bit like the scorpions. They are sometimes called the scorpion sting, where they fire psychoactive darts, sort of psychoactive tasers, into you, which uh, obviously sting and cause a lot of pain um, to to you. Whilst they then follow up and try and decapitate you with a whirring chainsword. Um, but yeah, I always like that idea of the appearing from the shadows as if from nowhere, and then wreaking havoc and then disappearing again. Although how you hide in the shadows in bright green and yellow, I do not know. It's probably some ancient 
uh, Xenos magic that allows him to do so. Ooh. Well, these are not quite as prominent with the way his angle of his leg is, but we got there, we got there, we got away with it. Oh, hello, Grashtest UK. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. We are uh, for the, we are just painting some striking scorpions from uh, one forty thousand. We were supposed to be painting night goblins. Yes, Eldar. Yes, the pernicious space elves. Um, I say we were supposed to be painting night goblins tonight because that's our project on a Monday and Wednesday. But sadly, the uh, the night goblins we'd ordered haven't quite arrived yet. So I had to resort to something. And uh, I chose the Striking Scorpions because they've been sat on my desk since the uh, sat oh, oh, you're a Slanesh fan then. Oh dear, she who thirsts, never, you never will get me. I always keep my soul stone handy so that uh, my spirit stone, sorry, so I can't, so I will never fall to she who thirsts. My soul will be sent to uh, in aid. To eventually overpower the uh, god of excess. Yeah, we're trying to get in and do these uh, yellow banding on uh, scorpions. So we've got a bit of nice colour. We might have to go back in. Looking at, looking at where the wash is dry in some places, we might end up going back in and just do a bit of a a panel wash with panel lining with uh, some just full on black rather than non oil just to really add a bit of uh, relief between the armor panels just to really bring home the color differential. Oh, Slanesh. So, you have all the Chaos Gods, Slanesh has always been lowest on my uh, on my personal preferences. I think it's probably because corn's number one for me, so I just have this natural enmity for the followers of the God of Excess. Um, just just ingrained into my brain. But uh, also I think they just have far too much far too much detail work going on <laughs> in their models. I just can't be bothered with it. Um, that's why again, corn's great. It's just blood. You can always cover it up with some blood splashes. Um. Oh, excuse me. I tickled me in the throat there. So I tell you, it's an Ah, yeah. Sometimes I that probably being what well, it works out <coughs> in the law. But here's hoping. <laughs> Until that time, I just hide out in the impunity circuit, um, and occasionally get turned into a, a wraith guard when the need arises. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Let's get a bit more definition around some of these uh, armor panels with some thin down black. Sadly, when I went to spray these earlier, I thought, I'll get ahead of this, I'll get ahead of the curve, and uh, I'll make sure that the green is all down, so that you guys aren't just sat here watching me paint nothing but green for four hours. Oh, excuse me, one second. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, I hate when you get tickly for it like that. It's absolutely nice. And for those people who know me, like I, when I cough, I sound like I've got flipping tuberculosis. I sound like I'm about to hack up half a lung. So I'm making sure this time, unlike on previous streams, I'm going to make sure to mute the microphone. I'm partying with the mask. The dirty mask of Sanesh. Ugh. No, can't be dealing with it. Can't be dealing with it. <clears throat> See, both I will send both the Eldar and the 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 followers of the Blood God after you. My my demons of corn will find you. 
multiple multiple bloodthirsters because if in doubt add more bloodthirsters is my go to answer when it comes to playing chaos demons uh, had a really fun time at an event <coughs> where I took Scarbrand two bloodthirsters um, and Bellacor that was fun <laughs> it was one of the bits in the army as well because including Abaddon because I could, I had the points left over um, to use, but it was it was hilarious. It was just contact with the enemy and, and see what happens. Just blender. <laughs> uh, yeah, as I was saying, yeah, when I when I when I sprayed these, I think I didn't. I think I might have gone a bit too overboard with the <clears throat> the airbrushing. And especially with elder models, with because they're so uh, fine, I think we may have just put a little bit too much paint on. It's clogged up a little bit of the detail. <clears throat> I'm hoping with some fine highlight work, we can salvage it. Because I personally am not happy with it right now. But like I said, sometimes, you, as, as my friend Benny likes to say, you have to trust the process. So we are going to keep experimenting with this one fella and see if we can uh, bring him back to a stage that makes me happy and where he fits with his... Uh, I think, because the thing is, the thing about my Elfway army is I think they are an incredibly high quality army, if I do say so myself, when in my own terms. So if they're not up to scratch... They will be headed to the dreaded dip. Uh, that's not a Who Framed Roger Rabbit reference. It kind of is, but um, it's more. I don't know if you've ever come across Biostrip, which is the absolute best thing in the world for stripping old miniatures of their paint, um, especially plastics. It's really good at just taking all the layers of paint off of uh, something so you can get right back and try again so like I said <clears throat> if I'm not happy with these guys and how they end, how they come out they will be headed to the dip so I can try again this is part of the reason why I do like a unit a year for this army because I'm very like because like, I can do Space Marines in my sleep, right? You put a Space Marine in front of me and say, paint it in X chapter, I pretty much can just do that straight away without even thinking. And I'll just chug away and do it. And I can paint them to a quite a nice standard. But uh, Eldar, there's just... Because they're so lithe and thin <clears throat> and have a lot of detail on them, uh, they, they just... They're not very forgiving. At least I don't think they are. I don't think they're very forgiving to mistakes. Um, especially when it comes to the thickness of paint. Um, if you start putting blobby paint on, a, on an Elder model, you just forget it. <laughs> it just does not work. Um, so like I said, we're going to try. Let's go back to some more of these yellow grey stuff. I think this is going to be definitely going to be a model of experimentation. I think we're going to be doing a lot of tweaking. Um... As is like usually what I do when I have uh, the model I've not painted before. Uh, I have painted some striking scorpions in the past, but they were all metal or um, or resin um, from the dark time, uh, the fine cast era. <sighs> so I. I'm going to be doing a lot of experimenting, so I think there's going to be a lot of switching back and forth. Whereas before, whereas with other models, I would probably be taking you through my paint process with great confidence. Like, here's how you do this step, and here's how you do this step. This one is very much going to be a bit of, mm, hmm, ooh, let me try this, let me think of that, let me give this an experiment. So, apologies. Um, I hope you can still follow me. Three keepers saying, Jack Hill, Oof! Yeah, I mean, I would say 
you know, I would swap out the Keeper of Secrets for Bloodthirsters, Shalaxi Hellbane for Scarbrand, and I mean, what have you even got Zragnil in a Corn 8 army for? You know, clearly Angrath is the way to go. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's I would agree. That's what you need, that's need more. You don't need anything else. Um, yes, my biases are fully on display tonight. But fair play to you. Like, that is, that's a fun army. I think, I think the, the, for me, part of the fun of playing a demon army is just using giant greater demons. Um, none of these little piddly ones. They're usually only there to fill out requirements in uh, force organisation charts. Although thankfully now with the new uh, 10th edition 40k, you don't need any piddly little dudes. You just have three of everything. So it's three regular, like you say, three regular keepers. One, uh, and then some character ones. And then Robert's your father's brother. Time to get down to some sexy times, I assume, because it's Slanesh. Okay, let's jump. Yeah, no. No Ultra Wings here. Um, Marnius Calgar's Toilet Power. <laughs> For those people who remember the OG Marnius Calgar model, um, he was on a throne. It did just look. Just get him, just. Yeah, pfft, that's what I mean. There will come a day. Maybe what you should do is put them on square bases and join us in the old world. Because, you know, then they will look satisfying. Because a hold of 120 demons, you have to move one by one. It's a pain in the ass. But nice, a huge block, you can just move. That's where it is. They're almost as exciting as a giant um, greater demon, then. Right, so... I know what I think it will do. This which will hopefully <clears throat> make this uh, make this start to pop. We're going to have a go at the uh, helmet and the helmet lenses on this working scorpion. Because yeah, I'm having I'm having a bit of yeah. We're we're on that we're we're on, we're on a bit of thing where we're a little struggling just a little bit with this uh, this this tracking scorpion because he's not. I don't know whether you have this, but when when I find sometimes when I'm painting things, especially new things, is uh, if it doesn't, you have this idea in your head of how it's going to work and how it's going to come out, and if it doesn't, it just it it just feels like you you know you're fighting uphill and it just it's not it's, it just the satisfaction's not there and you can't you've got this idea it's a vision in your mind. This is gonna look. It's gonna look awesome, and sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it's again trust the process, like Ben says. Eden Pete, I've had way. Oh, some extra Bretonians. Oh, thank you very much. That works. Uh, that is awesome of you. Cheers, buddy. Um, I can't even remember what they were. What was even in the, in that pile? And it could be anything. All I remember is finding like piles of stakes. So, uh, from the from the archeries, uh, archery from the archers. So that is very awesome of you, dude. I will arrange with you to uh, come and uh, get hold of them, or we can pass them amongst mutual friends or whatever it is. Just in case I don't get Tomb Kings when I get the so I do get Tomb Kings. I can have some Bretonians for myself just so I can play around. Um, that's 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 what I'm. That's my answer. That's my 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 excuse, honest gov. It's just so I can test out p potential paint schemes. Nice archers, men at arms. Not sure if any manages. Hey, any like I said, even just having one or few, one or two of each of them would be great because it means I can have a practice, and I can I can figure out what I want to do with uh, with the color schemes. So, thank you so much, dude. That's very welcome, and again makes me even more fired up to get hold of my my box set. Right. So, we just had a quick go at some uh, of the eye lenses on this striking scorpion because I'm just hoping that if I can put a few, if I can put one detail together, oh, just putting some tiny white dots in there. Yeah, I had to read, I had to completely shut up for that one. The Bretonians, the French, oh yes, they are disturbingly French. 
but uh, they are also kind of cool. Uh, I know if I'd say that about the French. Apologies to anybody who's out there who is French, but uh, no, I, I, they were an army that were never, I, they were never really a thing that grabbed me back in the heresy, back in the days of, sorry, back in the days of the old world. Um, they never used, they never grabbed me before, but now, now having seen, like I said, that that Pegasus model, oh, ooh, it stirs something in the painter in me, um, and having listened, I've been listening to the new. Uh, novel by Graham McNeil, Laws of the Lance, um, which is the first new world, sorry, first new um, novel set in the old world. Uh, I am very even more fired up to give painting some Bretonians a go. Right, so, but away from the French for the moment, I am trying the Knights of Knee. Knights who say me. Yes, there is always that. And then there was, there was at some point somebody had done, some miniatures company had done somewhere, uh, an entire set of the uh, characters from Holy Grail as Bretonians. Um, with the, all the knights being, you know, the characters of a, a damsel. Oh, yes. I noticed that she's advertised as the um, this week's masterclass for on uh, Warhammer Plus, which is brilliant, hilarious to me because she's not actually been released yet. Um, nor have the Knights on Foot, which again look really cool. I really want to get a box of those, but uh, we've seen neither high nor hair of them. Okay, so back here we are tr just giving a bit of the armor a highlight. Just so I can see what it will, it will look like, and see whether we are in fact on the right track with the striking scorpions or not. So we're going to some moot green, so we can get a good, good uh, look there. So we're going for some moot green, just around the edge, um, and also the thing is they've also got these little furrows on the mask. So we're going to get some. Uh, some Dawnstone. We're going to have to thin this down real good because these are some super fine highlights. Oh no, he's gone scratch. <laughs> oh yeah, there's got to be a few, you know. Tis but, tis but scratch. Um, the Black Knight. Uh, like I said, there's, there's so much comedy gold to be had with Bretonians. Um, and the medieval... Uh, Knights in general. So again, I'm trying to. These highlights are so fine. And I'm trying really hard to focus and talk. Um, right. So I'm already a little happier with how this is coming out. Um, thankfully, I can go back in with a bit of black here. Just to really neaten these highlights up, because, like I said before, these L are so unforgiving when it comes to highlights. Right, let's see. Did I remember my brass? I did. So again, we're going to carry on with the helmet area. So we're going to paint the Mandy Blasters, which are these little projections sticking out the front of the face mask. So I'm trying to get those. Nice even coat of brass there. Um, I'm hoping, like I say, that. Ooh, I'm trusting the process. Trusting the process. Also, his spirit stone on his chest is going to be bounded in uh, brass, like it is on all my Altoid Guardians. So that gives us a nice bit of tying colour there. Um, well, well, we'll go and do the rest of the details here rather than focusing too much on the helmet. We're going to do the the weapon haft here, the, the, the handle, um, 
a guard on the chain sword. Um, again, the gemstone and this little bit of um, sort of detail work on the blade of the chain sword. Should be all brass as well. So here we are. Yeah, this this week is going to be suddenly. I bet all of the stuff's going to turn up for me in one day, and I'm going to have to be really, really smart and, and just do the things I have to, rather than getting sucked down the rabbit hole and just building everything left, right, and centre. Um, I think when it comes to Bretonians, I can get some of these models. Um, Maybe some works. We'll uh, have a go at some, maybe one of the knights of the realm, and have a go at doing. See what he looks like in the scheme that we intend to use, so that I can, if I get the Bretonians, I keep saying the if, not that I'm really leaning towards <laughs> Bretonians, that um, we can, uh, we can get ready for doing the uh, Bretonian lord because that's the one model I'm really, really desperate to paint more than any other. Um, so fingers crossed that the the coin flip goes our way. Um, like I said before, for those of you who don't know, uh, we have a YouTube channel now. Uh, you can visit us at Onyx Dragon Gaming over on YouTube. Um, there you will find any of the previous streams that we've done. Um, I say any of them. The first one we didn't. I didn't. I, I was still learning the secret archaeotech of Twitch and the various programs. So sadly, we didn't record that properly. Um, and then last Wednesday stream, whilst we recorded it, we recorded it in the wrong format. So we tried to upload it to Twitch, it kind of messed up. Um, but Friday, we remembered, we figured it all out. So as of now, all of our VODs will be up on Twitch. Um, either probably the following day, so that I can just go home and go to, go to sleep and not have to worry about uploading to, to, to YouTube. But uh, yeah, the following day, following the stream, the VOD will be available uh, there as well as on Twitch. Um, but we're also going to be doing uh, our own YouTube-specific content. Um, so starting with this, uh, with the Old World box sets that uh, I and Alistair Arms, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, are going to be painting. Um, and we keep, our, keep eyes on our social medias. And I'll let you know when those are going live. So that was the start of our more curated and edited content, shall we say, on YouTube. Um, because eventually I want to be able to go and do event reports for when we go to get to go to events. Um, I'm hoping to take my Dark Angels to a 40k event at Warhammer World this year. And as soon as they announce an Old World event, I will definitely be there. Um, Lord only knows what I'll be taking in terms of armies to that, but uh, you can be rest assured that we will you'll be able to follow along with my with the progress of whatever it is I choose to do um, for those events over on, and also with reporting from those events over on YouTube. So come join us uh, and like, share, subscribe and all that. And on Twitch here, if uh, if you haven't already, please drop us a follow. Um, it really helps out. We're, we're hoping to get to uh, Twitch affiliate so we can unlock some awesome more new features, uh, such as custom emotes and channel rewards and all that good stuff. Um, also, we will be launching soon. We will be launching a Discord uh, server, which you will be able to join and use to again follow along with the projects we do here to share with us all the cool hobby that you guys are working on um because we want to see that too and i thought that'd be a good place to uh for people to show that off so you can join and make a part of the honest track community and again as soon as that goes live we will let you know but yeah the the, the current thing our current goal right now is to reach twitch affiliate um which for which we require 50 followers. We have so far 
33 of you wonderful people out there have uh, followed us, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, but if you've got any friends or, or enemies even <laughs> who you think could, would enjoy this dream or just want to suffer listening to a middle-aged man rant about Warhammer um, and other such things, please share this dream with them and encourage them to drop us a follow. So like I say, we can get to that Twitch, that sweet Twitch affiliate status um, and we can start offering more fun and exciting things for you uh, as well as helping us take this project to the next level. Um, but like I say, thank you to all those already who have dropped the follow. It's very gratifying to see all the support out there uh, for cool hobby projects. Um, so yeah, right. Anyway, back to the scorpion. Hmm. <laughs> so, I've been having a go, a little bit of highlighting here and there. I'm um, just going to try and redo this gem stone ready for putting the reds on. So we just want to get so we just leave them with the the brass rim. There we are. What do we think? Am I being too harsh on myself? I think probably, but yeah, we will. We'll keep. We'll keep. We'll keep plugging away and seeing what we can get to. Um, like I said, it might suddenly come alive when we do little bits of detail here and there. Um, sometimes models like, are like that. Sometimes you can do paint 98% of a model and it just doesn't look great and then all of a sudden you hit it with a wash or a particular highlight and then BAM! It comes alive and then it's just, there we go, that's it. We, we, we figured it out. We found the magic ingredient. Um, let's say I'm still not 100% sure with this one. But we're going to keep going, we're going to keep going. Connecting to chat, what's happening here? I'm back, I'm back in the chat room now. Weird. Um, maybe there's something with the internet here. Ooh. Hopefully I didn't disappear on your stream. Hopefully it was just the, the, the chat. Ooh. The other problem with these being so small, being the detail being so small, is it's really hard for the wash to get in there. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is definitely definitely a struggle. This model, um, it's not going the way I wanted it to, and I really wish it was. Um, but no. Tell you what, we might just paint. Might end up painting some more Night Goblin Spearmen. <laughs> I did bring them with me, um, but I didn't. I thought maybe we do. I wanted to do something a bit different, so we're not just painting every stream is not just Night Goblin Spearmen. Um, but we've got a few more that need doing, so we can finish out the um, the block of Spearmen. But yeah, so far the Scorpion's not not. Playing ball, I don't think. I think maybe it's maybe it's just because of the brightness. <sighs> hmm. 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 Yeah, no. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep persevering. I think it doesn't help that it also left one paint brown, which is gonna be which is the color I use for. I always seem to forget one paint every week. Uh, every stream, sorry, and this today's stream, today's paint is more paint brown. For those keeping track at home, um, I've left it. Uh, it's the go-to color I use for leather on my Eldar because um, it looks really cool when it's been uh, washed with non oil. But uh, we'll, we'll 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 keep going. We'll keep persevering. We'll trust the process and uh, hope that in doing so the model will come alive 
We can fix it in post otherwise. <laughs> Maybe that's what we need. Right, let's try and define these uh, yellow bands a bit by adding a bit of uh, black pin wash around them. Again, which again, I say it all the time, but it's another tip. Uh, one of the tips I try and give out is when you've got two stark colours like the yellow and the and the green here, you want to try and raise them apart from each other. And the way to do that is to either if they're dark enough, you can get over just washing over the top. And when I say washing, I mean washing over the top and around. Um, but as these are really fiddly, and they're also with it quite being quite the yellow being quite light, we're just going to try and plop in a little bit of this really thin down black around the edge, just to help lift it away from the green and make it so it's its own separate detail. Um, but as it seems we want to do, this uh, scorpion is fighting me every step of the way. Uh, should have just brought some guardians. Guardians are clearly the way forward. This is why I choose to do it all the way. So, you know, so I don't have loads of aspect ways to do. Let's give a bit of definition to the ones down here in this vital area. I think also we should spill a little bit onto the green in between these little chevrons. So maybe if we just highlight that up a bit. There. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. So yeah, I think we'll, we'll keep pushing, we'll keep pushing. Um, let's, let's do some, let's do some more detail on the sword. Maybe, maybe that'll, maybe doing a, a, a nice normal weapon. What can go, what could go wrong with doing the weapon? Um, <laughs> I'm starting, my desk is starting to look like it does at home now. I've got loads of paints everywhere as I try and, and, and remember to shut them and put them away. Um, I'm just going to throw this on the floor. Um, right, so let's get to the teeth with some lead belcher. And I'll just paint the teeth on the chainsword. Oh, see, that's more satisfying. That's what we want. Yeah. There we go. If in doubt, see if it, maybe that's the thing we've learned here is. Uh, if you're struggling with, with a bit of detail on, on, a, on a model, find a bit that you know is going to work and go in and paint that. And in this case, for me, that's the weapons. Because <laughs> weapons are easy. They've got metal bits, they've got spinny bits, and then they've got cases. And I know what I'm doing with those. So we'll go in on the, the uh, shuriken catapult, shuriken pistol, and we're just gonna put in the mag track, and make paint that silver. This is a bit that helps fling the discs out. Um, it's one of the few areas of metallics. See, most stuff that the Eldar make is made of psychoactive plastics uh, called wraithbone, which they literally sing into being. Um, so there tend to be very few metallic areas on Eldar models, um, but not none. So, like I said, we've got these, the weapons are obviously most likely the place to have them. Chain swords, for example, although they tend to have like wraith bone swords as well. Um, but yeah, the little mag tracks on the, on the pistols and the shooting catapults are a good piece of, uh, a good area to put a bit of metallic on and it's a nice little spot colour I find Use, using a particular um, a particular metallic metallic that's not a word metallic um, that just sounds like a meta Scotsman a metallic <laughs> metallic is the word so we've also got some more gemstones which we're gonna pick out in our bronze. See, 
we might take another one of our patented brakes to run round to uh, Harlequins in a bit. <laughs> See if we can grab some uh, Monfang Brown. Although, if there's anyone in the chat that's in Harlequins <laughs> that wouldn't mind bringing me a pot of Monfang Brown, it would be much appreciated. <laughs> See if we can get some interaction here with the chat. Um, okay, now I'm putting more details on. I think, I think I'm feeling happy about this. I think we're getting it. We might, we might be getting, maybe it's the detail, maybe it's, that's what we need all along with the detail work. So we're going to put in this, uh, it's like a, uh, what's the word? Like a ribbon or a bit of leather tied around his uh, leg here, which I think we're going to make, we're going to paint black um, to help it tie in again with the old way. Um, and it's not leather, as I don't think it's leather. At least I'm choosing not to make it leather. This is like going to be like a, thing that helps and identify him as part of the craft world. Um, it's got a gemstone on it as well, which we'll come back to. But yeah, you can see that on the leg there. Also around his arm, we've got these tassels. And what I think we're gonna do with these is we're gonna paint them black, but we're gonna go back in. We're gonna go back in after we paint them black and highlight them up. We're gonna put little uh, bone, like lines of a bone on them so that they sort of match the uh, the bone on our race here, uh, sorry, spirits here, to really help. That will really tie us in because we don't have much areas to put bone on the striking scorpion. Um, but this one might be a nice one. It'd be a little detail, a little tiny detail, but I think it would just be enough to help sell it and be like, oh yeah. They're from all the way. So we'll get that, make sure we get that whole piece of cloth that's round his uh, round his arm. And oh here we go. Uh, where are we? So yeah, we do a bit more. I think it needs another layer on the black. I've got to find the underside of it now. The bit that's dug in behind the uh, bit of the back of the leg. There we go. Awesome. Yep, we're starting to come alive now. It's ever so slightly. Uh, the models are really it's starting to come together. I'm just going to cheat and have a quick look at what, how GW did theirs. Obviously far better than me. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to also paint these uh, pipes as well black. Um, but what we're going to do with these, we're going to put a bit of a heavy highlight on them um, of grey and then probably wash them back to get that, uh, that colour. So it, is a more, so it looks like a more of an off black. Um, also, most of this belt work back here, it seems, is all um, fittings. There's all metal fittings in between. Um, as are the little parts at the top of the spare magazines and the grenade. They're like little belt hooks. So we're going to go and paint them metal. Um, okay, trusting the process I think is working. I think it's making me feel a lot happier about uh, how these look. So we're just going to put a bit, put a bit more colour in. I think we're going to paint the bottom of the magazines brass like they have on the Games Workshop website. Yeah, I'm using I'm using their basic scheme as a kind of, as as a guide because I'm not always very good at making color schemes up from scratch. So I tend to use Games Workshop model there or or just Google searches and see what people have done out there and then put my own twist on it. So for this, I'm going to match mostly the Games Workshop color scheme, 
but like I said, we're going to go in and do some detail work that really uh, sells it as being part of Croft World Elder. So that's where we're at now. And like I said, the more I do this, the more I'm kind of coming to love this model a bit more now. I think, I think, yeah, we just have to stick with it and trust. What do we think? I'm, I'm, I think I'm much happier than I was with it. Um, I think it is slowly coming together. Um, and I think we're, we're, we're definitely going to, we're definitely going to keep it, keep going. Gonna paint this little connection bit. Brass as well. Oh. Get in there. Huzzah! Right, that bit's been, had a bit of a splash on it. So we're gonna paint that back over. Just check these anywhere areas we've gone over before we come back in and do a wash. So I'm gonna be crazy, and on these mounted blasters. These teeny tiny mandy blasters, what we're going to do is they've got little indentations in them, but because the wash hasn't really picked them out, we're going to try and paint them in like an absolute madman. And already we've messed it up. <laughs> so we're just going to mess them out with a bit of really thin down paint and just see, see if we can get it to settle in a little groove that it is. On the model, and we'll do it on the other side. See so if we can get away with it. Oh, that's much better on the other side. And see so if we get the tip of the blaster as well. Right, I don't think we'll mess with that anymore. Okay, so I think the other thing we're going to do is these. So Imagine the other big inspiration for this Dragon Scorpions is the Predator from the movie of the same name. Uh, the best uh, slasher movie in history, in my opinion. Um, Arnie, best best final girl ever. Um, changed my mind. <laughs> so we're going to go in and we're going to try and paint the the lower part of these little sort of multi part tassel things. We're going to go in and paint bronze as well. Now, with these, normally I just cover the whole thing and then just let the wash it out, but where the wash isn't really giving us the separation I'd want, and I'd come back and I'd end up coming back in with black anyway. So I'm trying to paint them all individually first. Um, and then we'll wash them. So I just cover more around the back here. One and two. Cool. It's time for some null oil. Fixer of many problems, but sadly not all. Right. So here we go. It's null oil time. Give that a good splash all over this blade because it's black and it doesn't matter. Get it on the handle. Around the cross guard. It's made itself a little bubble there, we'll just blow it through. And all the way on this side. Make sure we get every part. But at the same time, we're going to make sure that we don't let it pull too badly on this. Like I said, these models are not particularly forgiving. So we need to kind of be very careful with our washes that we don't spill over or let it pull too much. Um, but we're just going to make sure we've got a nice layer of the wash. In all of these metallic areas that we've done. And then come back in and do a bit of highlighting. 
and that again should just help us make everything stand out more it might help us enjoy the scorpion a bit more but we're getting there we're getting there all right so we're going for the helmet tassels ta-da right so that's the wash layer on we'll make sure it's all uh, cleaned away we've not got any too much pooling so a it doesn't take forever to dry and b we don't end up with these massive tide marks on it as well so doo -doo -doo. there we go we definitely went a bit too mad on the uh, ye oldy chainsaw um, getting there there we are it's a lot cleaner now um, right it's happy hobby hair dryer time I think so one second Oh, that was a bit hot. Right. So now that our wash is dry, let's go and finish off the detail on the sword. So yeah, I think we I think we've reached the we've gone past the point of the peak now. The hardest we've gone past the hardest point. We've pushed that boulder up the hill. And we've just reached the top, and I think now. It's slowly starting to fall down the other side and pick up a little bit of momentum. And that's the best place to be. And that's what we want with our hobby projects because, I, like I said before, it's all about motivation and uh, satisfaction. And I think we're now at that stage where, as the details starting to come alive, it's now becoming a satisfying paint job. I said we were struggling early on because this is still a test model. This is why I always do test models. Always do test models. Uh, I would advise for your armies because it helps you really nail down how you want an army to look. Uh, or even a unit in this case because obviously I know exactly how my, my guardians and things like that will look. But uh, this guy being the first of the striking scorpions I painted to fit in this army he needed his own... Uh, test miniature and we've got one now and uh, despite some early teething troubles I think like I said I want to say that despite having some troubles and worrying about whether it was going to work or not I think now we are at the stage where I think I can say that we're over the hump and I think we might have got this nailed down um, so we're just going in with our classic black highlighting colour of Eshing Grey. Um, I'm going to go a bit overboard on this tube here because we're going to wash it again with uh, Null Oil just to make it stand out as off black and not just black. Make it look like a bit of a different texture. Um, I discovered this when I was painting a lot of Empire models for Star Wars Legion is one of their predominant, obviously some of their, obviously Darth Vader and some of their uh, units like the Death Troopers and things like that are predominantly black um, to an almost overwhelming extent because obviously they, these things look better on movie screens than they're not designed to be tabletop models. So at first I was a bit racking my brain with how I was going to make that work but I've realized that using by using different blacks and off blacks you can get the impression of different materials because obviously that's how they made the costumes work was they would have like a cloth undersuit uh, and then black sort of plasticky armor on top which when added all together looks really cool now obviously the models we paint are all one um, material but we can paint them to look like different materials um, and depending on on uh, the properties of said material it depends on how the kind of finish we go for so for example 
on these uh, on, on these weapons, which we know are going to be made of like like a sh quite probably quite a shiny plastic uh, type material. We want these to have really sharp, stark highlights because if you ever look at a piece of like you know um, solid PVC or whatever that had been polished to a shine, you get quite bright highlights on it. However, if this was like so, like the cloth, for example, um, if we want that to look morning, we might start with an off black um, already because when you see like a, a black cloth, because like my T-shirt here, for example. Um, even though it's technically black, it looks more off black because of the way the light doesn't bounce off it. It sort of absorbs a bit. Uh, so yeah, the, this is how we can paint an all black model with loads of different colours of black. There's not just the one black. Um, at least I found that that works for me. Um, and it's worked in the past on uh, other well, like I said, it worked in the past for me on painting Empire, and hopefully it'll also work on uh, this striking scorpion. So I think that's a hot initial highlighting done. Oh, yeah, just checking. So we're gonna go back in with a super fine highlight or Dawnstone on this one. This is really gonna make this, especially the chainsaw. I think it's gonna really make it suddenly pop. So we're going to try and get the model paintbrush. Just tilt it sideways, run it right up the edge. Oh, look at that, already bang. Straight away that's just popped into life. Really defines that edge. Makes it look all sorts of wicked and dangerous. Oh, he says. Fix a little mistake there. Whiz that through, there we go. Yeah, you can see that popping up on the camera. And there we go, look at that. Just get in and do this little guard area. Let's find a little bit of detail here. Like that. And then on to the pistol. So I'm leaving the head tassels for the moment because they are also going to be black, but they are going to be, because uh, they're sort of all round tubular. I'm going to want, I think, more of a gradient on the highlight to help make them look round. Again, it's about how, what's the material made of, what shape is it, and how would the light catch it? Um, these are the sort of things to think about. Now, sometimes on bigger models, you can cheat uh, by, if you hold it under your, if you hold the model under your hobby light at a certain angle, you can see where the light catches. And you can be like, so look on this helmet here. So if I wanted to paint this even further, see how this uh, patch here on the light, if I wanted this to be where my source of the light was coming from, I'd make sure to put some really nice highlights to blend it in to that little, put that little, uh, where it is white on the camera there. So then when I take it away from a really intense light source like this, it'll still show up like in that. Um, so yeah, the tassels on the head are all going to be rounded like I said so I want to think I'm going to start with some corvus black on those to really help push it into like a by going sort of wide thinner and thinner it should make it look like it's rounded um, he says we'll give it a try um, as for these little blisters on the gun we're just going to try and pick up the very top edge, leaving that etching grey underneath to again help with the with the curvature. Um, go around the edge of this barrel. Yep, we missed that bit there, and then the bottom of the magazine well. This is where it gets tough because these are really sharp details. Um, Around here, again, top side of that blister, around the back of the the um, mag rail, Ooh, back of the scope. I love how these have got scopes. 
And these guys got no, like these guys got helmet. I mean, I assume, I see. Well, I say that now. I say that louder. I've obviously answered my own question. I was about to say, why would they need a big scope on the back if they got like helmets on? But I'm assuming that there's a little reticule or a little picture-in-picture picture inside the helmet that shows them where they're pointing the pistol. Um, cool. Let's just get the edge of this. Ooh, the edge of these bits of cloth here, like so. There we are. Cool. So that's a little armband. Right. So remember, what I said before is one of the things we're going to do to help sell that this is from Althway is on this little uh, armband here, on the back, here, on the back of the arm, what we're going to do, we're just going to paint some, like a bone line across the whole thing. Just try to make it as straight as possible. And the same on the other part of the cloth. Boom. It's just a little subtle detail, but it will hopefully help. Because on uh, things like my race guard, for example, that I've already got in the army, they have uh, tabards that go between the legs. And I've done the same thing. So they've got on the tabards on between the legs, they've got like a white, they've got the bone thing, and then above it is the room for the uh, for the race guard. But yeah, so here we go. It's just a little little detail that allows us to add a bit of bone colour into the uh, into the model to help tie it to the rest of our force. Just going to try and continue it down. There we go. And then I think I've just spilled over the edge of where I want it in between. So the between the two bits, we're going to go back in just to help separate them and make them look like they actually are two bits of fabric. There we are, look at that. Right. I am going to take a quick break, I think. Um, and I'm going to nip back, because now, now I'm fired up. <laughs> I was really nervous about this. I really didn't think it was going to work. But now I'm actually kind of fired up. So I'm going to quickly nip round to Harlequins and pick up some more Van Brown. So for those of you who've seen it before, uh, you get to see a montage of some lovely... Uh, picture, some lovely models we've already painted here on Alex Dragon Gaming. Please don't go away. I, I'm i not going to run this time because last time I ran and I could barely breathe when I got back. But I should be back in a couple of minutes. Um, so please enjoy these lovely uh, models whilst I go and uh, get some paint. So back in a minute.
and we're back. Thank you for sticking with us. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Whilst I didn't run, I am still ridiculously out of shape. So I'm still a bit, a bit breathy. But we got what we needed. We got some Mournfang Brown. So, we can go back in and paint the last of the details, which is all the leather work. So he's got like a pistol holster on this leg and the belts as well. Just sort of run around and hold it up. These are all going to be Mournfang Brown. Because again, this is to match in with the colours that I've done my uh, the rest of my Ulfway troops in. So I try really hard not to get this colour anywhere else because it's such a bright stark colour that it will really stand out if we get it in the wrong place. So we'll just take an hour, just take it a little bit of time to make sure we got it where we want it and not anywhere where we don't. So here comes the fun part because the elder like to add their turn to tie all their things on with like really thin threads. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tiny, tiny bit of thread. Oh man. We have to definitely have to come back in and tighten neaten these up. Uh, when we get around to it. So this is our first pass with the brown. So we're gonna come in. Make sure we've got all the belts. Um, so it looks like I don't know whether that's part of the armour. It is in fact part of the armour. So we'll leave that. Um, I'm going to see if I can find the guy that I'm currently painting on, uh, on the website. So I can have a quick look exactly what they've done that's the same colours. There we go. Right, cool. I think I've got an idea now. So, awesome. I think that's, that's literally it, I think, in terms of the belt. There's just these little bits, I think, in between the uh, magazines, which we'll just try and pick up. But that's it. So, we'll wait for that to dry and throw on a bit of uh, uh, metal. Sorry, metal, a bit of wash. Um, and then. We're going to try and do the hair tassels. Now, he says somewhere I should have. <gasps> there it is, the Majestic Corvus Black. So, Corvus Black is an awesome colour. It's really good for doing what I like black cloth um, or the sort of rubberized parts in between uh, Space Marine armour. It's also really good as a first highlight. Of something that you want to be sort of curved and black. So we're going to go in again like we did with the brass and just do an individual highlight on each one of these little tassels, these little rods that we've got. They probably make such a satisfying noise clacking together. Um, but they move like now that they're doing live action things. Hello, Mark. Welcome, welcome, welcome to last week's night. No, wait, wrong show. Um, this is the thing, I swear. I keep, when I keep thinking about the stream every week, I keep thinking about all these different intros for different people that I've watched over the years. And I've got to try and remember not to do them. So yeah, we've got the welcome, welcome, welcome to last week, week tonight with John Oliver. Uh, for some reason, I always think of um, Holla ballers and a pro fist to you all from uh, Preach. For those of you who watch Preach, you might preach on uh, YouTube or Twitch or wherever he, he uh, subs uh, exists these days. But yeah, I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to. I'm trying not to try and force like one of my own. You know. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, QI Stephen Fry. Hadn't thought about that one. Yes. So, I think probably the reason I think about them so much is so I can avoid. Not like not copying people. 
But I was like, part of me thought, well, maybe I should just do a different one each week. Uh, just as a way to kind of, as my own way of doing it. But no, there we go. So these are the kind of mental thoughts that go through my head when I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing on the stream. Clearly the important things. So we're going to go back in again on these head tassels. A little bit of eshing grey. Trying to leave some of that coarse black in the recesses. Um, just so they sort of lift off. Oh well, yeah I know. It's all practice. We'll get there eventually. Right, so. Okay, thank you. Now, speaking of getting there, we've had two more followers tonight, so thank you very much to you gentlemen and all ladies, or in-betweens. Uh, we're now 12 people away. 12 people away from affiliate. So if you know anybody who can, who wants to watch crazy middle-aged idiots paint models on stream, or wants to listen to their mental banter, please share this with your friends and get them to come along and drop us a, drop us a follow. Okay, so we're going to double check our last bits of where, a bit more inspiration, inspiration, he says. I'm going to go back in and do the gemstones that are on his waist. Gemstones are so much fun to paint, I swear. Uh, once I figured out how to do them, I think probably because I was a high off player for such a long time, or an elf player in general, uh, they are one of those details that is super common across like uh, elves and Eldar, uh, gemstones and uh, helmet lenses. They're such a, yeah, like I said, they're such a ubiquitous um, detail that I, I had to figure out how to paint them. And then once I figured it out, oh, man, are they satisfying. They will add a, so many, they will add like an extra layer to your painting, I swear. Um, we'll do it one of the, and as we're getting a list of tutorials that people would love to see, just little quick, quick guides, which uh, people have asked already. So I think we've got how to paint faces, how I do my bases, um, how I do my gold, um, and uh, silver for armour and such like that. Um, but if there's any others that you'd like us to see, like like me to take you through, of how I paint certain things, please let us know, either here on social media, um, and I will add it to the list to show off, um, because I'm all about helping people and getting people to help raise their own painting game. Um, and I think... One thing, as much as this stream hasn't been as uh, as um, super productive, maybe, as, say, the others we've done, um, in terms of output, uh, I, would like, I, hope it, I hope it shows you that just pushing through sometimes on a model where you're not quite 100% sure if something's going to work or not, just stick with it and trust the process. That's a TM for... Ben Greaves there, that's his thing, his mantra. He's been painting a lot of uh, Imperial Fists recently for Horus Heresy, and it's um, something he's not done before. And uh, he kept, he was sat, he sat opposite me um, when we were doing our hobby sessions, and he keeps saying, trust the process, I've got to trust the process. And it would, it would come out, and it'd look absolutely stunning. And his new army is looking absolutely fantastic because of it. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's tonight's lesson, I think. Tonight's lesson from this dream is trust the process. Um, sometimes a model won't always come together straight away. Sometimes you've just got to put, a, just got to hope, you know, focus on the stages and getting through them. And then it'll suddenly start coming together. And I think that's definitely what's happened with this scorpion. Is a... Uh, I was really regretting it. I was thinking, nope, this is guy's gonna have to go back in the dip. I'm gonna start all over again. I have to think of a new scheme. Um, I don't want this unit in my army. I think it looks rubbish. But actually, now we've persevered and we've got down a bunch of uh, 
a bunch of extra stuff. I think by the time we've gotten round to it, by the time we put the final sharpest of sharp highlights on uh, on this guy, um, and we've managed to get in there and uh, paint all the gemstones and put, and more importantly, put his base pay, base on because that'll again, we said it, I said it before, and I'll say it again. Um, faces and bases, and if we if we get that base on, it will really take us take this bottle to the next level. Um, so yeah, I think that's tonight's tonight's little lesson. Um, I mean, we still have plenty of time to go. We're only halfway through the stream here, so we might go back to some night goblins. Uh, after we've done this, but uh, like I said, I wanted to do something a bit, new, a bit different and a bit new. So we're just finishing up. We'll finish up with this striking scorpion. He's the most striking of all scorpions. Um, as a bit of a palate cleanser, and we'll go back to the old world, the best world, and we can talk about all things fantasy. Because now that the legacy lists are here. Oh yeah, I said I said earlier in the stream. I am so excited. Um, I should be able to get my first game uh, of Old World soon because of that. Because the army I've got closest to finishing is my Dark Elves. Um, I hope you saw some of those on the uh, intermission screen. My Black Guard, my Sorceress, who I'm extremely proud of. Um, thankfully, I had enough bases at the time in Ye Oldie Bits box uh, to um, base my Black Guard and my uh, Sorceress on a 25s. So they are ready to go. Um, or at least those 10 are, I say. I've got some more. Um, I've got another, I think I've got another 5 to make into, an, into a, a unit of 15, although. I really want to go to 20, so I think I'm going to need to buy one more box of Blackguard if they're available at the moment, he says. <laughs> um, and I think I've got nearly all of the uh, militia that I need, so I've got the, I've got a big block of spearmen, because um, every, every elf army should have a block of spearmen, um, and my dark elves are no exception. So I've got them ready to go, but then you will need rebasing on those lovely 25 mils. And, uh, but I think I need one more box of them so I can get me some crossbowmen. I've got 10 crossbowmen already, but I want another unit of 10. Um, I've got some bolt throwers, they're ready to go. Um, I need to rebase my uh, Cold One Knights. I've got the first one painted, but the rest of them are all built. And my dragon, my dreadlord on dragon, who again, I'm really proud of. I love a good dragon. Um, again, one of the things I'm most excited to have back is, uh, is awesome characters on awesome dragons. I'm really hope, like I said, I'm really hoping the wood elf, the wood elf dragon makes a return because that was my personal favorite was the wood elf forest dragon. Um, so that is the one that I'm most excited to see. I think I might have gone a bit overboard there with that lug enough orange. It's okay, we'll fix it with a bit of brass. Hopefully I need to throw that old pot away. This one's much better. So we're gonna go for this. This lug enough orange makes such a perfect final highlight on red gemstones. Um, and as these are so small, like normally I would do, I think five or six different layers on gemstones to get that proper transition. But when they're this small, I can get away with just three, where I just use corn red, uh, evil sun scarlet, and then I do a little, a little curve, a little line curve on the bottom of Luganoth Orange. Yeah, so on the bigger ones, I'll usually go corn red, Mephiston red, uh, evil sun scarlet, Wild Rider Red, Troll Slayer Orange, and then some Luganoth Orange to finish off. But like I said, these are 
so freaking tiny that you do not need to do that. <laughs> um, and as I say, if you're painting, if you're painting a Golden Demons <laughs> model, then you definitely would make sure you do all seven stages or however many it was. Um, but because these are going to be on the tabletop, whilst I want them to look really awesome, there's no need because no one's going to look that close. Um, and as long as you've got the effect from a distance, that's all that matters. Um, I went in there a bit too mad with the white counter dot, which is the thing I found that brings gemstones to life the most, is once you've got those all the colours on, doing the little, I call it the counter dot, on the opposite side to your highest highlight, on the bit you left black, just put a tiny white dot, and boom. That sets off the gem perfectly. So after we've, uh, so after I finish all these models and I've, if I've varnished them and finished them off, I will, uh, I'll put some gloss varnish on the gemstones just to help them stick out even more as the sort of lenses and things that they're supposed to be. But think as it goes oh, oh I missed gemstones I missed the ones on the hilt of the sword go back in do the one on the top and this one's gonna be fun and the one underneath see we might be able to get away with just leaving the one underneath black because you're never gonna see it but if you sort of tilt you'll see the black end so yeah we'll leave that but yeah there we go. So he's nearly completely finished. There's a, we've got no, we've got a bunch more highlighting to do on the green, um, and unfortunately we didn't bring our sand with us today, so we can't base him. But now I look at him side by side with our our uh, spirit seer. I think he he might deserve to be in the army after all. Um, I've just noticed another detail. Which we can do. Ooh, yellow starting to set a bit. I have to give it a good shake. This is why you shouldn't leave all your paints open on your desk, especially under hot lights. Um, so, at the top of these band, these sort of hair band thingies, I don't really know what to call them. There's like a, a bead in between these two sort of layers. So we're just going to go in and paint that yellow along the top of those individually so they stand out a bit. That helps add a little bit more detail. It's a weird shapes. So I'm trying to, because of where the moulding process is, um, in order to let, make them to get these on the sprue, they kind of gone round edges and sort of smushed out. So we have to kind of fill them back in a little bit. Especially here, there we go. Just give it a look back. Make sure these yellows. So as for so the yellow one here, normally I well like I said we did on the on the night goblins. Normally I would highlight my yellow with, by adding in a bit of um, your shabty bone to get more soft yellow. But because these are supposed to be like super super bright, this yellow, I think I'm going to have to use something like Uriel yellow, which I don't actually have, and that'll be my top highlight. Right down the middle of all these, uh, all these details, but we're gonna have to leave that uh, for later because I'm not running around again to pick up some more paints. I think once is enough per stream. But yeah, so there we go. A striking scorpion. Uh, it's not as perfect as I want it to be, but I'm still. Really happy with how it's turned out, so that's pretty awesome. Right, you know what? We need a bit of uh, progress, I think. We need something that's going to be 
what we're going to do really quickly is something that's going to look wicked quick. And that means night goblins. So I think we're going to phone. Let's see. We've got two hours left in this stream. So let's see how far we can get with five basic night goblins. See, now we've got it all there. We've got the... Uh, We've got the, the unit nailed down. We've got our first 10, our first two ranks. They are live. You can see pictures of them on our socials, and they look awesome. This is where I've run out of my, my square bases. I saved my last 10 for them. So unfortunately, all these guys are on uh, rounds. <laughs> but we will uh, see if we can... Except if, if I can... Remember where I put all the greens? You know, if I left the one green that I need. I find that... Uh, and I'm looking even sadder right now. Oh my word. This is this has been the worst. I I swear I prepare for these dreams every time. Uh and yeah, and this has been the one stream I think. Oh no, no, there it is! <gasps> oh, for a minute there I was like, oh what am I gonna do? But no, thankfully I did remember it. I didn't I didn't take it away. So it's back to the old world again. Let's see if we can, how quickly we can batch paint some night goblins to fit in and finish off the back ranks of our first unit. And we can talk about what awesome things we've got coming up uh, on the way. Because if we will it hard enough, if we will it hard enough, it'll, it'll happen, it'll happen. I swear. So, um... They'll be here. I love. I want to believe that the the rest of our army is going to appear uh, and be here with us for Wednesday for the stream on Wednesday. Um, I don't know where to start first, though. This is the thing. So this is where maybe you guys can help me. So I kind of really want to paint some squigs um, because they're fun, um, but I don't know whether I should start with some small squigs. So, just some basic, bog-standard squigs from a squig herd. Is that where we should start? Or should we have go big or go home and uh, start with the mangler squigs for the army? Um, because they are awesome. They're huge. They take te they've got really good textures. But obviously, it's a bit more involved in painting. We won't see as as much of a progress as as we might do with painting a squig herd. Or, do we not even do that? We can go completely outside the box and start with our stone trolls. Um, again, really excited to do stone trolls. Uh, they're such a classic goblin unit, in my opinion. Um, I'm really excited to see that on the made to order for, for orcs and goblins, we're going to be getting the old classic stone trolls, the ones that the that were uh, then used as the basis for the mail order trolls, for those of you who remember them. Back when, back when you, there was no such thing as the Games Workshop website, back when you were, you had to order by ringing uh, mail order directly. Uh, good times. When you could order all sorts of bits. Um, and ordering all bits was always fun, because no matter how many times you hear that joke, so I don't know if you know that for those people who don't know out there, uh, in 40k especially, the slightly bigger orcs, the ones that keep the rest of them in line, are known as orc knobs. So one of the funniest things you could do or was when somebody would come in with a mail order and they were asking for some orc bits, because there were certain bits you'd usually buy, uh, like to buy separately when they were metal. Uh, one of those one of those bits were the heads of said orc nobility. Uh, so ringing up the men of the trolls and being like, huh, I'd like to order some knob heads, please. <laughs> and you'd giggle down the phone and they would giggle back to you. Um, or the Storm Boys, the unit of Storm Boys, the guys with the jump packs. Or, well, they're not so much jump packs as literal rockets strapped to the backs of uh, orcs. Uh, they had their own knob, and he had his own specific rocket. So, when you wanted to order that, you had to ring up and ask for huh, the knob rocket. <laughs> yes, at the end of the day, 
we are just like 12. <laughs> These jokes will never not be funny. Um, and it was always, always made me laugh when somebody was asking for some knob heads or a knob rocket. Um, these are things that keep you going in retail. <laughs> For those of you who have survived uh, working in retail or are still working in retail, you you, you know and this is what these are the things that would keep us alive when we're doing such a when we're doing these sort of things because God knows you need something. Um, but on to happier notes, yeah, we've got loads of cool things coming. Um, I was having a look at the. Uh, uh, what they call the uh, the underworld warband, the Loon Court. I can't remember the main character's name, but the Loon Court are going to make some really cool un unit models. Um, I think for our units, uh, if not unit champions. Um, there's a guy in that set. I think he's uh, pulling back like he's got like a little tiny catapult on a board, uh, and I think he will definitely be our. Unit champion for one of our units of archers, Night Goblin archers. Um, I think that's going to add a lot of character to that unit. Um, there's a guy with a, ham, a little mallet tied to a stick, riding a, riding a squig in a bit of armor with a shield. I think he's going to have to be our uh, unit champion for our squig riders. Um, there's obviously the main guy. Uh, I don't again. I, Count for the life of me remember his name, um, but the main sort of leader of this of this sort of like war band, I think will either be our our goblin war boss, or possibly our one of our shaman, depending. Although we've also got the gobbler palooza coming, which is just an absolutely mental amount, like crazy stack of goblins. Doing all sorts of weird and wacky nonsense. They're mostly shaman, I think they are. Um, so they will be our, one of them will probably end up being our shaman. Um, although we've also got the recently announced returning um, goblin command set from Forge World coming, which has a really cool shaman where he's kind of like, he's up in the air, oops, sorry, he's up in the air floating with smoke pouring out of every orifice, it seems. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll just have him on standby for our shaman. So if, if we roll a miscast and, we can, and he takes damage, we, we can replace him with that model. Um, and he can look like he's, that's it, we can tell he's damaged because he's losing control of the great warg energy that he's trying to pump through himself. Um, but yeah, I think we'll also try and use some of the Gobblerpalooza models as unit fillers. Um, just again, to add a bit of character to our units because we're going to have a few blocks of spearmen because unfortunately whilst armies uh, in old world are not as big as they once were in terms of model count um, I think yeah, and we can all agree that, that night goblins being the pathetic creatures that they are are still only worth about three points um, so this means we're still going to have to paint quite a few of them to uh, finish the army, but I will, I will chuck away at some of those uh, off stream, so that we've always got something new and sh shiny to show uh, us painting. Because because you don't want to be tuning into. Hey everybody, welcome to day fifty six of painting goblin spearmen. Um, which is why again why I brought the scorpions tonight. I thought maybe it would uh, we just keep us going a bit something something a bit fresh while we wait for these fresh new models to arrive to us. Um, let's just check back, make sure we've got a nice base coat coverage before we go to our wash. Again, this is the, one of the major reasons why I picked goblins in the first place, is um, night goblins especially. Like Regular goblins, we'd have to do arms and muscles and all sorts, which I can do, and don't get me wrong, it's just when you've got to do them on 80 to 100 of them, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough. So thankfully, Night Goblins, we just have to do hands and faces uh, and a little bit of one arm, which is great because these, A, the bits with the most character, the fingers are easy to pick out, 
to make them look really cool. Um, and obviously the faces is where all the character is. Um, so they're really satisfying to paint. It's why I like, again, like elves are another good example of this. My Dark Elf Spearmen, they're mostly, the only flesh we've got to paint on them is hands and faces inside their helmets. Um, whereas if we were doing something like, I don't know, uh, Chaos Warriors, for example, uh, whilst those guys are all completely covered head to toe in solid, oh, what is wrong with this? Goblin, he's got something on his chin, like a bit of, like a bit of uh, hair or something. Yeah, so while the Chaos Warriors are covered in full plate mail, uh, the Marauders that make up sort of the bulk of your army normally are mostly just muscle-clad dudes. Um, and whilst they can be fun to paint on a one-to-one -one basis, like painting the odd, say, like, let's say, Katachan for uh, 40k, is really cool, especially with some of those characters models that were released over the last few years. Um, they were awesome, really cool looking. The sad thing is, once you've got to paint forty to fifty of them again, it just so becomes a slog. And flesh is one of those things that if you mess it up, because um, it's going to be such a visible detail on the model. If you knock, if you mess it up, it just. It, it, it can just ruin the whole thing, so that's why I've been afraid to do certain, do these sort of armies before is because I don't want to mess up. I don't want it to look terrible. But, thankfully, I found me a good recipe to uh, paint Night Goblins. Uh, nice and quick. And again, thankfully, because i got such nice detail on these kits, you know, like the faces are so well defined, um, they're really easy to just whiz through. Um, I mean, we took our time with them last week because I was trying to take through all the step by steps that I do for these guys, um, which I hope you appreciate it. But for for now, now we've now we've done the kind of how to. Oh, this guy just not want to look very good, does he? Ugh. You're going to the back ranks, my friend. Oh, there we go. Oh, there he is. I can finally got the piece of hair. I think. Oof. There's always one. There's always one flipping model that just doesn't want to play ball. Um, like I said, he can go right in the back rank, and no one will ever know. So I'll put him to one side while while these faces dry. Yeah. So we got a nice quick. So even though we took a while with them last week, now I've got into the rhythm. Because that was also part of me learning how to batch paint goblins. You know what bits I can, what bits I can take my time on. Uh, or need to take my time on, I should say, and which bits I can just get away with, just you know, kind of quickly slapping together. Um, and I think that's where we're at now. We've got, like I said, we're just whizzing through. We've nearly got the, we're halfway through the longest stage of the whole model. Um, which is the skin. And in the, what, 10 minutes, 10, 20 minutes, I've been chatting to you. Yeah, should I go back for the break? Oh, oh dear, that's not quite dry. To the hairdryer. So there we are. So that was it, a quick hairdryer. And then that should be... All we need to get this wash stage on. Mm -hmm. You are just being a pain, aren't you? This little goblin, he's gonna get a name probably soon as well. Like Jeff Arnetta. This is gonna be, I don't know, some kind of obnoxious name, because he's being a pain. I don't know, Tarquin or something. Uh, apologies for any Tarquins out there, or I doubt there are. <laughs> but in case, I don't want to say that your name is inherently annoying. But I was just trying to think of something off the top of my head. That was a bit out there. Right, so, again, I'm going to go back to the hobby hairdryer one more time.
And now my fingers are slightly cooked. <laughs> right, yeah, so already we're like kind of halfway there. With this, well, at least with the skin anyway. Um, get straight on to our first highlight. <gasps> See, I'm going to do this properly. Yeah, look at this. Nurgling green, and it's the right way round because I have learned things. <laughs> so, we'll get on to our first highlight. So, anyway, uh, back to more ramblings of ancient hobby times. Um, we, uh, I, I, like I said, our world is back, finally. Uh, we, we had the launch weekend this weekend um, at Warhammer World. Uh, there was a big event. Uh, sadly, I couldn't make it um, for many reasons. One, I've been busy with all sorts of painting things. And two... I need to suck my. I'm one of these people that need to suck myself up at big events, um, because they require a lot of energy for me. Um, so, for example, I will be going to Salute this year. Um, for those who don't know, Salute is a big miniature show uh, convention type dealy that's held in the Excel Center in London every year around sort of April, May time. Um, I, I attend with uh, a company called Zinj Industries. So it's all technically a working weekend for me, but we get to wander around and see things. So if anybody out there is gonna be at Salute this year, I'm hoping to have my own, uh, I'll be doing some videos there. So come say hi if you see me, if you recognize me from stream, feel free to drop, drop and say hello. Um, I'll be at the Zinge booth most of the day, but I do get a chance to wander around and see all the awesome stuff that's there for sale and uh, all the new games for the different companies and some of the awesome display tables that are there. So you might catch me wandering about uh, the convention centre. Um, but yeah, so I'm alright with that day because. I've got a plan, I know what I'm doing. Um, I'll be busy most of the day because I'll be selling fine resin uh, miniatures to people. Um, and I'm trapped behind a set of tables. But, uh, and also because I have like six months to prepare, I get my brain together um, and I prepare myself for it. Um, Whereas the Warhammer one this week was just a bit too close. I didn't really have time to, like, do the necessary mental prep. Um, I don't want to make any assumptions, but I know that this hobby tends to uh, attract a lot of neurodivergent people, or neurospicy, as my partner says. Um, so I'm sure you can probably relate when you go through your own, own things. Um... I share these sort of things with you just because I think it's it's always it's healthy to let people know out there that we all go through we all have issues, we all have things and as most confident as I seem on the stream, um sometimes we're all I'm always thinking, Oh, is everything going okay, you know, how do I come across or whatever? And I think letting people inside to that and know that they're not the only ones that are probably thinking that can sometimes help help people deal and just and also help other people the the normies out there <laughs> yeah thank you thank you Mark yeah uh, let the normies out there know that sometimes things are not always as simple as they appear on at first glance with things so sometimes a little bit of awareness goes a long way um, so yeah. anyway back to the whimsy that is Painting goblins. I hope I'm doing this right. I'm sure it was nail green. You know, you like you convince yourself that you're not doing the right thing. Uh, this has been one of those dreams, I think, and my brain has just seems to be all over the place. Um, clearly, I need some sleep. But in lieu of that, we've got more painting. Um, we'll get these guys. I reckon we can get these guys. To ready for basing, whenever we get more bases, 
Um, I think I'm going to be... Were you ever like that when you were young, like waiting for the postman to arrive, like when you knew it was your birthday, or you knew there was going to be things coming through the mail, uh, and just sat there waiting, like, every day, oh, I can hear him, he's coming, I see him, he's up the street, I wonder if he's going to stop at our house. Like, I feel like that's going to be me all week. And like, is he here yet? Has he been? Except, this will, I'll be bugging the ever-living crap out of Tom. Uh, Lazy Dragon Gaming, to find out if that's happened, if he's had his army. He's going to be sick of me by the end of the week. Um, in You know, on top of the way he's usually sick of me when we're recording the uh, the podcast, the Lazy Dragon Experience podcast, which we will be doing tomorrow, I'll be like, you're coming through the door, and I'll be like, hey, how's things? I'll be like, is, is it here? Is it here? Where's my stuff? I want to paint things. So, that'll be fun. He'll probably pop up in the chat soon and be like, oi! <laughs> no, I, I try not to bug him too much. I understand, you know, running a business isn't easy. Um, when you've got to deal with other customers, when, you know, when things aren't your fault, he can't do anything about the fact that Games Workshop won't send him the stuff yet. Um, but he can do stuff about me being an annoying git. So I'm going to try and be gentle with it. <laughs> try and be gentle, just nudge. Like, oh, I just haven't happened to have turned up as it yet. Try and find a way to talk without actually, you know, explicitly saying I'm, I'm here specifically just, to, just so I can find out about my stuff. Um, but it's exciting! It's a whole new game! I've got two whole armies on the way. You know, I want to mess around with them. I want to, I want to build and paint. Um... Because as much as I've got a massive backlog already, and I'm sure everyone in the chat is going to back me up here, new things are cool. Because <laughs> they're new. Or in this case, old. <laughs> um, I just, I just want to paint. I want to paint new things. Or just look at new sprues of models I've not personally put together yet. Um, I think I'm going to have a way... Like I said, building is my favourite thing. It's the most cathartic hobby activity for me because um, there's no well there is some thought to it you know cleaning up the parts making sure they're all all the nubs are gone from where they've come off the sprues and things like that but uh, it's definitely something that I can do with my brain switched off so I can have an audio book on or a TV show on in the background and just chug away building new is always better that is correct um, but yeah so I'm looking forward to opening boxes and building all sorts of new shiny things this week um, whilst I watch random stuff on TV or listen to more Games Workshop audiobooks because that always helps me get fired up for doing a new army um, like I said this one I'm listening to Lords of the Lance right now by Graham McNeil um, because it features both the Tomb Kings of Kemri and the Bretonians, so like it'll it'll get me fired up for both. Um, there's also some really cool. It talks about some of the cool border princes, uh, some exiled Bretonians in specific. Um, talks about the black steel they have, and of course, as soon as I heard that a phrase, I was like, "Ooh, black steel!" You say that sounds like a cool. Uh, Thing to paint, but um, oh, but yeah, and I was like, I, I'm trying to get distracted and think of even more projects. So I've got to find maybe I've got to find some army uh, audio books that are just about things I'm supposed to be working on right now. <laughs> Don't know if there's any good Night Goblin or the what they call in Age of Sigma now, Gloom Spike Gits novels. I can listen to. Um, wow! Throwing them on the floor. Oh dear. So. Yeah. I think the most thing, the thing I want the most though is I just I want elves back. I want some elves. Elves is please, GW. We've had the, we've had, we've had orcs. I'm assuming that. The one after orcs we're going to get is uh, dwarves because they kind of match up as a pair, or possibly uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Or empire, 
a cla- you know the sort of classic poster boys for the old world as they as their <laughs> their realm does make up a large chunk of said old world. Um, I would have thought they'll be the next two. Uh, I said the next one after one of those. One of those two will be the next after orcs. But I want my elves. I want my elves. I was talking to my friends last night at our hobby night, like what they could do. If we assume that every um, every new race is going to get one new kit, although the orcs have already, I think, disproved that. Um, but if we assume, we like to speculate. That every race is going to get something cool and new. Uh, be that a cool character like the zombie dragon, sorry, the bone dragon, or the uh, the the an entirely new unit like the the knights of the realm of foot. What would you do for each of the races? Um, I think in in the tone of the that sort of thing. I think I'd actually when it comes to Empire, I think the one I'd like to see because they have because that's the other thing is like the other both Betrayal and Tomb Kings were kind of the redheaded stepchildren. They didn't get much love um, in the, in a lot of previous editions of fantasy. Um, the Wood Elves were pretty close to that line too. Um, I think they just managed to sneak in a new uh, book towards the end times, if I remember rightly. Where we got the Wildwood Rangers as a new unit, um, but to be honest, I think of them. You know what I really want to see for Wood Elves specifically? New Dryads. I think that would be the the kit to go for for me, or or War Dancers, because they have a lot of metals in their kit in their range still. Um, as much as Way Watchers are my personal favourite Wood Elf unit, I think War Dancers would be the better. Plastics, if that makes sense, uh, they'd be a really cool plastic kit. I'd love with modern technology. Oh man, I'd love to. When you think of things like the witch elves that we have already, I would love to. Thinking about how cool a unit of uh, of of um, war dancers, all in plastic, would be. Here's hoping. But yeah, for the other races though, the problem with those is they had. A lot of the other races had almost all of their stuff was in plastic anyway. Um, so I'm trying to think of what what it could be if you had one thing that would come back new and improved as plastic. For dwarves, as much as I want to say Zeppelin, I think maybe the two things that they could have, I would probably say, if you're talking about centerpieces, Anvil of Doom. Plastic Anvil of Doom with its guards and everything, I think would be a really spot on plastic kit for them to do. Um, obviously, there's the flame cannon as well, it's another artillery piece, it's quite a big one, and I think that would look pretty cool um, as an army centerpiece. But, like I said, if I had to pick one uh, that I'd love to see as a centerpiece kit for the dwarves, as a new centerpiece kit for the dwarves, I should say, then Anvil of Doom is definitely it. Um, I think when it comes to Empire, I think the one that, even though technically they already have a plastic kit, I think as well now that they've made a real definition between the two, two variants, I think personally, Empire Knights. Um, especially because we have so much room on plastic sprues these days. I think some full on, full ch- tilt charging Empire Knights um, that are, that w- with all the different, so we have all the parts, there should be plenty of space for uh, some different, some different armoured torsos and stuff to make them look stand out. So we've got the inner circle between the inner circle knights and regular knights. And I reckon you'd have enough space uh, on the frames to do all the White Wolf, Knights of the White Wolf, such a classic uh, and different unit of um, knights because of their great weapons, their great hammers of Ulrich. But also I think you could, you'd have enough space on the frame to do specific helmets and shields 
with iconography for, say, the Reichsguard, um, the real poster children for um, knightly orders, or, say, the Knights of the, the Blazing Sun, the Knights Panther, that would be that would be absolutely epic. So I think when it comes to the Empire, I think that would be my go-to for the Empire's big central kit. Uh, or new kit, I should say. Kit or character. Um, High Elves are another tricky one, I think, because a lot of their stuff, as much as, as much as I would love to see, personally, the kit I want to see more than any other for High Elves being redone is the Militia. Um, I think their basic core plastics are, A, some of the oldest models in the range, but also I think they're some of the weakest um, and that's not always true with certain with those with older kits, but I never liked the fact that they didn't feel cohesive. So the current, well, I should say current, or the last version of high elf uh, archers with their sort of big flowing robes and big square haircuts, I really didn't like those. Really didn't like those. Um, the spearmen were lovely. They were very tall, thin, and elegant. Um, uh, and the, I get that the silver hams were just too chunky as well. I don't think they were very good. And their horses really need updating as well. But for me, I would love to see a box, a bit like how they did for Dark Elves, where they had the one torso, the one body and torso, that then made sort of spearmen, swordsmen, uh, and bowmen. That's what I would love to see for High Elves. Um, I'd love to see, because I think for me, my favourite archers, see, I would do it with, I'd have the bodies be the same, and then have it so you can turn them, so you can turn them sideways, so you can have the classic bow up, arm out, feet, you know, across the body, um, and the heads I would have is the ones with the, from the old metal ones where they had the, the, the bands with the feather in, and the long flowing hair. I think that would look really cool, um, and I think modern kits could do absolutely amazing with those. Um, and then the spearmen again would have the classic; uh, they'd have the big conical helmets, and they'd have them facing front because obviously now they wouldn't have to be at an angle anymore because we're ranking them up. Because on twenty fives so they could be a bit wider, big shields. Um, and I'd love to see. I don't think I want to see three D shields as much as they were cool. I think what I want to see is a nice new transfer sheet because that's something else I want to see for. Um, from Old World, I would love to see more uh, transfer sheets uh, updates because we've seen the awesome things that the the transfers team that work for Forge World or Specialist Games, you know, whatever it's called these days. Genuinely staying in what looks like one of the most tales from super, super central, supernatural release of Tunnel Wi Fi season. Well, thank you, my dear. That's my lovely, uh, my lovely better half there in the chat. She's at work and she goes from, from hotel to hotel and apparently, while she's got good Wi-Fi, she looks like she might be attacked by uh, some sort of supernatural attacker. You know what you need to do. You just need to put salt down by the windows and the door. You know, quick cheeky seal of Solomon by the door just in case. You know, make sure you've got all the windows and doors sealed. You'll be fine. <laughs> Don't know what you're worried about. Cool. Right, so, we're already on to highlighting the skin. Um... What was I saying? Yeah, so, yeah, that would be my high elf go-to kit. Um, I think that covers all of the good guys, so to speak, in inverted commas. Um, on to the bad guys. I think, uh, I think, behind after I've massive bag of salt. Yeah, exactly, perfect, you're fine. That's all you need. Big bag of salt, job done. Yeah, also, it's not, you're not the one booking the hotel, so you don't have to worry about the cleanup costs afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the extra charge for cleaning up all this salt um, yeah so that's it that's the good guys bad guys when it comes to say um, so we've got the the force of chaos think of a new kit for them well they've had a lot of new stuff in Age of Sigma which will port straight across but again I think the marauders now are showing their age I think they would be the go they would be my go to replacement kit right now um, replace the marauders 
with a new shiny cut box set uh, that makes all sorts of cool very different marauders that, for different weapons and whatnot your great weapons in your uh, stuff like that um, so that's them covered who else have we got the bray herds so the beasts of chaos oh beasts are diff again difficult one because they've had their range is again relatively new although beast chariot i think would be the one for that because we've got like the main you know we've got the gores we've got the best of gores we've got uh plastic minotaurs which are pretty cool um yeah, I think for me, their big kit should be, or their new kit should be a boar, char boar chariot. Um, a beast chariot, sorry. That would be definitely the way to go for them. Um, orcs, they were, we don't, it looks a bit like we're not going to be getting anything shiny for them. Um, at least we haven't had it announced yet. Uh, for me, I think a big boss on Wyvern, like an old war boss on a Wyvern would be an awesome new model. Um, we're getting the one from from nine, all the way back in the day, 1993 back. And we've seen the one from the from sixth, the beginning of 6th edition be spoiled again. But I think a nice new plastic kit, a big awesome Wyvern. Not as, not as roided up as the Maw Crusher. Was for uh, Age of Sigma, but like a good, a classic, proper, slithery looking wyvern would be awesome. Um, and you actually have it with its wings down, you know, like all the modern movies seem to do. So here comes tonight's ma tangent, and it's feckin' wyverns in modern fantasy depictions, because. Mm. Let me tell you, that is something that really rattles my chains, really gets my goat, is the fact that dragons are all bloody wyverns in things. Like, in The Hobbit, Smaug, he's supposed to be this massive dragon. All the pictures of him are as a dragon. And, he's, and in the movie, they turn him into a feckin' wyvern. Now, for those who don't know, a wyvern has four limbs. Right? Has four limbs, two legs, and two arms, which are also wings. Like a bat or whatever. Right? Yeah, here we go. Why are the dragons? Whereas dragons have six limbs, they have two legs at the front, two legs at the back, and a pair of wings. And oh, it seems like because it wasn't just because I thought, well, first of all, I was like when they did it for um for the hobbit, I was miffed, because Smaug is one of those classic dragons. He's one of the most classic, if not the all-time go-to, like, this is a dragon character, right? And they made him a wyvern. Then, of course, our next big uh, show to come out featuring dragons in its sort of lead thing is, um, what are they called? What's the... I forgot what it's called, because it's called Tits and Dragons. Um... Game of Thrones, that's the word I'm looking for. Game of Thrones, flipping... Mm. Again, Game of Thrones. We've got this big surprise, there's going to be three massive dragons, and what are they? They're fucking wyverns. Again, massive wings, but only four limbs. And I'm sorry, but that's a wyvern. It's not a dragon. Hashtag not a dragon. Um, and yeah, that's been bugging me, as you can probably tell by the state of this rant. Bugs me, and I swear, if Games Workshop go down this line as well, of uh, like, hey, we're bringing back wy a wyvern. I mean, they've literally the problem with them is they, they've got why they they have both wyverns and dragons in uh, in the game. So if they were to bring back, if they if they turned in so dark ages, no, no, this is my tangent for today. I'm not going back on track now. Dragons, this is my rant. Dragons and wyverns. I want to see. I want justice for dragons. I'm trying to think if the Dungeons and Dragons movie actually did have proper dragons or whether it had wyverns. I'm pretty certain 
It has a dragon, so it gets a pass. Because I think Tembuchero, the big fat one, is an actual dragon. It has wings and four legs. Um, but I'm watching you, Wizards of the Coast. I'm watching you. Yeah. So yeah, that's my rant. That's my rant for the day, is bring back dragons in movies. None of this, none of this wyvern nonsense. None of this, oh, but it makes more zoological sense. No, shut up, it's a dragon. It's not meant to make zoological sense. It's supposed to be cool, damn it. So, yeah, there we go. Rant kind of over. <laughs> so, yeah, that, 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 that's my, my tangent rant for the day. Is justice for dragons. Um, yeah. <sighs> Chunky went in if it was probably dragging. There, there, there we go. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Timber Chode. He was, he was, he was a nice, he was a nice proper dragon. He was a big fella. Um, he was cool. I like, I like that film. It was surprising entertaining. <laughs> Sorry, saving everyone's eardrums there from a mighty sneeze. Uh, fueled by Monster. Hashtag not a sponsor. Um, yeah, no, I enjoyed. I massively enjoyed the D&D movie. I think it was, it was it was charming. It was funny, um, and it had a druid that could turn into an owlbear. I'm just gonna leave that out dangling out there for my uh, for my missus. For for those who don't know, she's a uh, She's a huge D and D fanatic, um, and she's a forever GM. She loves DMing, and for some reason, I don't know why. I think it's sort of like I <laughs> going on tangent number two for the night. Uh, owl bears, in my opinion, owl bears are the greatest thing that D and D has brought to the world. Like, and I don't care that Games Workshop was technically a spin off of D and D. I don't care that it's one of the most successful things of all time. The, the owl bear as a concept is the greatest thing ever created in the history of all of fantasy. Part owl, part bear, all awesome. Um, and I remember being like, when we were starting, when, when we were thinking about starting a campaign, and I, I said to my friend, I said to I said, oh, can I be a druid? Because druids can shapeshift. I can shapeshift into an owl bear. Because I was thinking of the druids like in World of Warcraft, because I played World of Warcraft, and the first, the first character... Our best variables all time, damn right. So one of the first characters I ever played in World of Warcraft, one of the things that got me hooked into it was the fact that you could play a druid, and then you could be a moonkin, which are even better. They're they're like owlbears on steroids because they're they're owlbears that are also um, apparently a stag because they have antlers, uh, and they are like the magic slinging form that uh, druids could do. And I remember seeing that and being like, "We're owl exterminators." No, that's in the future. That's only into the year three thousand. Um, when they become pests, as we've seen in Futurama. But yeah, no, like seeing Moonkin in for in Warcraft, I was like, I need to play that. And I remember, yeah, so I was I wanted to play. I thought of that, and so as soon as I wanted to play a druid in D and D, and my partner, she's like, you you know you can't do that, right? You can only turn to natural creatures, which is cheap, but they live underwater. You, yeah, the, I'm assuming that's a reference to the song Year Three Thousand. I'm not going to acknowledge it. Um, but yeah, because technically, owlbears aren't natural creatures. And I'm like, what? It, like, they might have been originally created by wizards or whatever, but now there's like whole populations of them. They, they must be natural enough now that would be part of the world. I mean, freaking hell, dragons and stuff are there. They're part of the natural world, right? But no, apparently you can't wild shape into, a, into an owlbear. And I think that's rubbish. And then, obviously, how many months later, along comes the, uh, the movie, the D&D movie, and what's, what, what's the big selling point there? That the druid can turn into an owlbear. So, pfft, that's all I have to say about that. Owlbears are king. Druids should be able to turn into owlbears. Welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all, that's all I got. That's my, my, my... I promised one round per stream, but we got a bonus one tonight because I forgot about how much I love owlbears. Um, they are... Just the best creature. Monstrosities. They are not monstrosities. They are absolutely. They are. They are the 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 pinnacle of the animal kingdom. Part owl, part bear, all awesome. They're not monstrosities. They're beautiful creatures. 
but yes, I agree with what you're saying about the the, the druid. Um, she is really, you know, she's both awesome and hot. Um, a combination that is <laughs> awesomely powerful and hot is one of those one of those combinations I am strangely attracted to. Um, read into that what you will. Um, but yeah, so right. So back to the goblins. We've got most of the flesh done already, so that's good. That means that we're practically finished with these no goblins. Um, all the best creatures and monstrosities. I'm a monstrosity, <laughs> but no, they're not. They're just they're not monstrosities. They're nature's glorious mistake, like the platypus. <laughs> I feel that's what they should feel. They should fall into. They should fall into the category like a platypus. Um, because let's be honest, that doesn't fall into any other category. Um, I want to know if you can wild shape into a platypus. Because if you can, then I'm sorry. Then no, no. If if the if if a, if a platypus is considered a wild creature, and an owlbear is considered a monstrosity, I think D and D is wrong. I think they've got it backwards. I'm not saying platypuses aren't amazing, but they aren't God's craziest mistake. They're somehow a duck beaver that's both poisonous and lays eggs. I mean, they just, you know, they're just, they are the, epi the epitome of random, hitting the random button on character creation when you're making a species, I think. Um, monotremes, is it monotremes? Is that the, they're technically, the, they're like zoological bracket, you want to say monotremes? It shouldn't work, but does, yes. Like a lot of good combinations in, in life. Um, yeah, the fact that it actually manages to be a species as well. And it's not one of those weird hybrids that's like, that isn't technically like a zonkey or a, uh, a liger. <laughs> yeah, it blows my mind. So I'm sorry. I think, there should be, I think we should start a petition to move, move platypuses to the monstrosity cat category in exchange for moving the owlbear to the wild creatures category in D and D. I think that should be this is the most important uh, thing of our time. Actually I think I have a statue, yeah, a right one make a monstrosity. No no you can oh, I'm sorry, we need to make this official. It needs to be a monstrosity only if we can move it into uh, we can move the, the owlbear into the beast cat beast cat I don't know wild creature oh, you know what I mean I don't know the rules like you do I'm a, I've got 30 years of warhammer in my head if I start putting D&D &D up there god knows what will happen that's why I have you dear you, you can look after all the 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 D, &D rules and knowledge and I can just be like that's not how that works in warhammer or just continually argue about the the existence of the owlbear um, to be fair though it is easy to placate me though in D&E just be like and now an Albert Majorola yes because again my, 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 my legendary dice luck extends to D&D &D, where I uh, yeah when I've been playing it I, I come up with all these like you know I, I, I try and really get into the, into the swing of things I've got on this really cool sort of monologue uh, or come up with a really cool plan uh, and then try and execute said plan and fall flat on my face um, or flat on somebody else's face I think I think this is best advice. so I used to play Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay um, they're on one of the shelves down here as well in my in my pile of books um, and in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay like the things are a lot um, I don't want to say squishier but things don't like if you're fighting something that takes like a long time to do damage to, it's really people should help you. Yeah, I know, right? Any kind of magic doesn't help me. But yeah, so what was it? Yeah, so I used to work on fancy roleplay. So I come from that where you could like kill a goblin in one hit. You could aim for the neck, cut his head off. Jobs are good, right? That's how I feel. So we were trying to infiltrate this sort of uh, mansion, I think it was, uh, with a sort of like a, there was like a, an evil family. Um, and they had like an orc bodyguard, I think it was. I can't remember off the top of my head. And uh, so we're all out. We managed to make it to the first floor balcony. We can see inside. There's the sort of evil 
um, lady of the house in there, chatting away to her hawk bodyguard. So I'm like, okay, cool. You, the ranger, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, shoot, you shoot the orc in the head, and whilst you're doing that, I will teleport into the room using my uh, magic and uh, punch the woman and try and knock her out to, uh, like, so we can interrogate her later. So you take care of the main threat by aiming for the head, shooting the head, arrow the head, he'll die, I'll teleport in, wham, take it, knock her down, come in. So we're like, let's do it. So we do this. My friend Rager comes swinging out, fires, beautiful shot, hits the orc, perfectly spot on, rolls good damage, uh, bearing, and, and I come, so I'm like, awesome. So I teleport in, swing, I somehow magically hit with my crappy dice, then I'm explaining how the rules work. So when it comes to physical attacks, you have to use your strength modifier to figure out how much damage you'll do. My strength modifier for that character was minus two. So technically, I ran, I teleported in there, hoofed them in the, in the face, and probably what I did was gently caress them and somehow slightly heal them by two points. Um, and then our, our friend who shot the, the, the orc, he comes in, does like 15 points of damage, we're like, yes, head, headshot. No, the orc's got over 100 hit points. So he's just like, thwunk, and he's just like, I'm sorry, what? This is a good example of, of, of how things do not go well for me uh, in, um, in D&D. And that's before I start adding in dice luck. Um, yeah, I used to come up with all these great epic plans, um, or even just simple plans. Like, when it comes to combat, oh, it's painful. I'm just sat there being like, uh, I, I, I'm just like, I'm going to try and do this. This is, what do you do for your action? I do this. I try and cast this belt or not. <laughs> Moving on. Um, yeah, and this is, this is, yeah, sadly. It, it, it's, it's hard to keep cheerful after a while, I'll be honest. When you, uh, it's no, it's no fault of the DM. There's nothing you can do about bad dice luck at the end of the day. Um, it happens, it's part of the game, it's what makes the game fun, um, is the doing and stuff like that. Um, you know, that's where the, the randomness is that mm, edge of your seat type thing of like, oh, can we do it? But yeah, when you can't even do the most basic of things, when you're like, like I go through this big monologue, like trying to use my sort of damn powers to intimidate a bunch of people. You know, make this big speech about how I'm going to torture them to death and watch them, you know, flay them alive and all that sort of thing. And the DM's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Uh, so roll, roll an intimidation check with an advantage. And I'm like, cool, six, one. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad. Um, but this is why I want to try some other role-playing games. So one of the ones I really want to try is the fate system. Um, I've seen good I've seen good things about the fate system, or read good things as well, I should say. Um, because the, the fate is more of a free form role playing. It's not 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 as rigid as say like there's a lot of rules in D D and obviously a lot of stats and a lot of things that interact with all those same things. With with fate, from what I understand, you have like when you create a character you have three um, I can't remember what they call them, but like they're like three attributes. Okay, and this could be anything, right? This could be is really good at sports betting, or you know is a phenomenal darts player, you know, for example. So when you want to do something um, in this in this role play, you can say, oh, so you can say to the DM, look, uh, I I want to do this thing, um, and here's how one of my attributes would be able to help me. So like. Let's say you're the world famous dart player character, uh, and you're like, okay, we need to. I want to try and take this this throwing knife, and I know they're not the same, but it's a similar type of thing. So you're like, I want to take a throwing knife and throw it at that guard, okay? Uh, or I need to throw this thing and get it into a, like you know, throw it and make sure it gets into a bucket or something. Um, you can you can say it to the end. Look, I think my skills with dart playing would make me. It would make it easier for me to do this. And the DM will be like, yeah, sure, I can see how that works. And they give you um, bonuses to your test. 
Because the way it works is you roll a bunch of these six-sided dice and they have a number of pluses and a number of minuses on them. Um, and obviously you're trying to get as many pluses as possible. Um, but just because you've got a bunch of minuses doesn't mean you've failed. It might mean that, some, like, let's say you need to throw this thing into the basket like we said in the example, and you end up with a minus on it overall. So what you might say is the GM would be like, well, you throw it, uh, it rattles off the edge of the, of the, the can, makes a lot of noise, and then goes in. And this alerts people nearby. Um, so, you know, it, it, I, I, it's a bit more free, like I said, a bit more free form, a bit more um, talky, which is good for me, because I can talk my way into cool situations in role playing games. I just can't roll my way out of them. Um, so, yeah, that's what I want to give a try to at some point. Um, but that also implies that I have time. Because I. I'm painting so many things at the moment. Um, obviously, we've seen these night goblins. We've seen some of the other things I'm painting for my own self, like my dark angels uh, for forty k. Um, and I'm I'm organising with, as I said before, I'm organising with Ben, my best friend Ben, to uh, do a stream the Monday after the dark angels box is released, which I think will be in two weeks from today. And we're going to unbox the, the set live and in person. And we're going to go through some of the new lore uh, and some of the cool new models that are in that set. Ooh. And uh, and talk about them as two, two lifelong Dark Age players and see where we're at in the current timeline. So that should be fun. Please join us. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, we're going to be doing... Carrying on with these with these night goblins. Friday uh, this week we're going to be doing a few, bunch of different things on stream. It's our casual Fridays where we're not doing uh, anything in particular. But I think this week we're going to be doing some tutorials. So we're just gonna I'm just going to be taking through uh, taking you through various um, short little quick tutorials of doing different things. So one of the things we've got lined up is how I do space marine faces quite quickly. Um, how I do my gold. So we're going to do that on some Stormcast to show that off um, because I don't have any more custodians at the moment, but I've done a whole army of custodians. How I do my super quick gold method. Um, and we'll make sure we tell you, tell you all the paints we're using um, and I'll show you the techniques that you need to use. We're going to do that. How will I do my basing? For those who missed it last week when we were basing the goblins, I'll be taking you through doing how I do basing um, and it will do, we'll base a few different in a few different types of things so you can see maybe some snow bases um some of the like light um earth type 40k ones that i use for a lot of my armies um as well as like the the dark gray ones that i use for my my night goblins um I'm trying to think of the, yeah I'll probably do gemstones as well gemstones and eye lenses is another quick one that i absolutely love uh showing off because it's one of those things that's Again, I think it's really cool and effective once you've nailed it and it just adds, it'll make your miniatures look absolutely outstanding. So we will be doing those live on Friday. Um, if there's any other things you'd love to know how we paint, uh, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment down below. Um, do the old doodle, you know, like, share, subscribe type thingies. Um, leave that down below on this comment. If not, I'll go on Twitch. If you either want to shout it out in uh, Twitch chat, either today or Wednesday, and I'll prepare for a Friday, or you can leave us a comment on our social medias, or drop me a message and say, hey Pete, um, how would you do X? Like, maybe it's a colour, maybe it's a particular thing, and I'll try and set up a little tutorials, and we'll do that as a live stream on Friday, and then I'll try, whilst putting the VOD up as well, what I'm also going to try and do is cut those up into individual tutorials, so you can find them on our website. So if you don't want to trawl through a four-hour VOD trying to find out how you paint uh, bases the way I do, we will find, make sure that they are a lot more easily accessible. So that's what's coming up this week. Um, what else are we going to be doing? Uh, yeah, like I said, Wednesday, fingers crossed. Oh, come on, please. Please, please send us, send us the goods. Send us our are much waited for um, Dyke Goblins and or um, uh, Bretonians and or uh, Tomb Kings. So hopefully they'll be here soon. Um, touch, touch, touch wood. This desk is made of wood underneath the, the, the thing. So that's what we've got coming up this week. Um, 
And into the following weeks, we'll be doing more, I say, more of the Night Goblins and more talking stuff about nonsense. Um, if there's any particular topics you want me to go into more detail on, like I say, we're also, I'm also part of a podcast, uh, the LDG Experience, which goes live, which is the latest episode of which has gone live today, uh, where I believe today we are discussing my Lord and Saviour, Lionel Johnson. I believe that's the episode that's gone live today. Um, so if you want to hear uh, the history of the Lord of the First um, in, and some humorous anecdotes along the way, please check that out on uh, Spotify or anywhere where you find good podcasts. Uh, that's the LDG experience, which apparently is really big in the Philippines. Don't know why, but apparently Filipinos really think about me talking about um, me and Tom talking about uh, Warhammer law. So yeah, we've got that coming up. Um, yeah, like I said, if there's anything you want to, anything specific you'd like to see on stream, so especially on Casual Fridays, if there's any particular models or any particular color schemes or tutorials or anything like that you'd like to see us tackle, please let us know um, and we will find a way to slot it in. Um, I am not, a, whilst I'm not a Luddite, I, uh, I'm not the best when it comes to messaging. Um, I will get back to you, but I've got so much stuff going on at the moment that it might take me a little while, but I, I promise you, I will get back to you. Um, at the moment, on Extraction Gaming is pretty much just me. Um, I have a couple. I have some lovely friends who help me out. Um, a couple of them are working, as I say, a couple of them are working on the Discord server uh, with all the permissions and whatever it is you need to do on that behind the scenes. They're getting all that ready and set up to go, so we can launch that soon. So that's more a direct place where you can come to and chat and discuss. One second. So yeah, that'd be a lot more of a central location. Plus, one of the things we really want to do on the Discord server is there will be a dedicated channel for you to show off your awesome works as well. Because uh, I would love to do, I'd love to see what you guys out there are working on, out there in Hobbyland. Um, and not only that, it would be cool to do um, a bit of a, a bit of a stream showing off some of some of the cool works that people are doing out there. Um, so if we've got a central place for us for people to share their stuff and if people don't mind us talking about their awesome hobby works a bit like Games Workshop used to do during lockdown where they would share uh, hobby uh, with people so some of the cool things that people have been working on over lockdown I would love to resurrect that on this Twitch chat Twitch channel maybe once a month we can do a we can do a uh, uh, do a, a show dedicated to all the fine hobby folks out there uh, and all the cool stuff you guys have been working on um, because nothing drives hobby like seeing other hobby um, although I apologise in advance if I see any awesome colour schemes and I think oh I'm going to steal that <laughs> so I apologise um, if, I, if I shamelessly steal it I will try and if I do though I promise I will shout out where I got it from um but like I say, in my opinion, hobby drives hobby. Um, and I would love for you guys to uh, show us all, all what you guys are working on. And we can, we can all um, fawn over it together once a month. I think that would be really fun. Right. So, we're going in, back in on our night goblin. Enough of the shameless plugging. We're going to try and at least get all the faces on these goblins. All the, all the flesh and face, face details all done on these Night Goblins before we have to sign off um, because we're, we're, we're getting towards our the end of our Monday stream um, it got off a bit of, I'll be honest today we got off a bit of a shaky start with our uh, with our striking scorpion he was not I tell you he was not wanting to play ball um, and as much as I'm pleased with the outcome um, of our our little friend, I think he his brother his brethren may be going to the dip. Um, I just think that the that I think when I did the airbrushing earlier on, 
I think it got a bit too, I think their base coat got a bit too thick. So we did our best to salvage him. For those who didn't see him earlier, here he is. We did this guy from scratch. He's one of his brethren. But yeah, I think, I just think personally, it's not as nice and smooth uh, as I want wanted. But I still think he's, 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 vi he's viable. Like I said, he's going to be going in my Ulfway army alongside our beautiful spirit seer here, who I've realised as well, this is going to be really, this is really bugging me. He's on a 25, 25, 25 mil base, and like all our old world models, he needs rebasing onto a 28. Um, it doesn't help there's any unit of uh, Wraith Guard who are on 40 mil, so it doesn't really make sense. But I know now, and now I've seen that he's on a 25, he needs rebasing. Maybe he'll be one of our candidates on Friday for our basing tutorial. He'll be one of the ones that we... Uh, I show I've had a base <laughs> and all the different things um, but for now we're going to finish the night with our lovely little goblin friends the night goblins um, I'm, like I, say, I, I keep saying I've said it before, I've said it all, all night but I'm super stoked for the rest of them to arrive because there's just so many cool models in, the, in in a Night Goblin army that we can paint. Um, our squigs of varying types and bounciness levels and sizes. Um, the characters, oh my word, the characters. I don't think any other tribe in the Orcs and Goblin range has as much... Uh, it's going to say character in the characters, but you know what I'm trying to say. They just... They, there's, there's just such, they've got such a, 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 a you know, a depth of personality, personality, that's the word, personality in their characters. Like, all war bosses are cool, and there's some awesome classic war boss models out there. Um, Gorbad Ironclaw, Azag the Slaughterer. These are awesome centerpiece models, but when it comes to pure, just personality in a model, in, an, in the Orc and Goblin range, I, I, you are hard-pressed, I think, to find any better than the Night Goblins. Um, so, yeah, painting them is going to be absolutely a dream. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with all the crazy details and all the mushroom types and magical fogs and things like that spilling out of them. Um, and maybe their own personal squeak pets. Uh, the other thing, obviously, one of the other great fun things that's got a lot of character in, in the uh, Night Goblin Army that we get to paint which will finish off, in fact, this regiment of spears that we're working on right now is the, the most deadly part of a Night Goblin Army, be that to itself or the enemy and costing almost as much as the, the unit they hide in, the Night Goblin Fanatics um, the 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 latest version of those models with the I like how there's two versions now you're going to have them wielding their classic uh, ball and chain or I think they have some sort of weird obnoxious like puffer squigs um, about the, you know so I think they're going to be really fun uh, to paint uh, again a lot of character and they've, they're one of the only they're one of the only models in uh, the current, in the Return to the Old World that are still on round bases, um, as they were in back in the day. Um, they were on round bases, and they have returned on round bases, which is a little detail, but I think that's cool. Um, they were because they never they were never designed to rank up, and they only end up either in the middle of an enemy unit. I say, oh. Wow, I am having trouble tonight. Um, yeah, they end up in the middle of an enemy unit or just wrapped around a tree or something. So, they are a classic part of the Night Goblin experience, um, is Fanatics. And I, again, I cannot wait to get them on the tabletop. Um, and now that my friend Ben is painting some dwarves, uh, we managed to convince him to join us in the Old World Crusade. Um, 
it, it's going to be great. And that's going to be a classic fi fight. Mm. Night goblins and dwarves. So I, uh, that'll be fun to uh, have a go with before we before we, we put this army up for sale. Because I hope uh, you would know. So the plan for this this long term project is once we've once we've played once we've finished it, uh, and probably played a couple of games with it to make to really bed it in, make sure it works. <laughs> we will be putting this uh, army up for sale on eBay, and you you wonderful fine folk out there can uh, can bid on it, uh, or if you have got mates that are really into into orc and goblins. You can uh, tell them about it and show them there's a place to buy an absolutely gorgeous Orcs and Goblin army. Um, I've, I've set, uh, so if you want to check out the, the ones we finished already, for those of you who weren't here earlier, you can see uh, all the Orcs and Goblins we all the sorry all the the ten Night Goblins we did last week on stream. Um, I finally managed to finish basing the the last the command group. And the last few, and they're all. We've taken some photos of them, or taken a photo, I should say, a nice photo of them because they look really good from one angle. We'll see the front, um, and they are now live on our social medias, so you can check out how good the rest of the army is going. This whole army is going to look already by seeing those kick-ass night goblin spearmen that we've already done. See. This is the best part about these, doing the little, these little dots in the in these red eyes, just adds so much to the character of the model. I love these models. These are so much fun. They just, you know, they're so again. If we said I was, I was struggling earlier on with that striking scorpion, trying to get him to look the way I wanted him to, um, and pushing as hard as I could, but not being totally satisfied, but. Every time I paint these night goblins, they just they come to life so quickly. Um, and it, it's just super satisfying, super satisfying. Um, which is good because we've got so many of them to paint. Um, I think that I, I now I've got access to an awesome army builder website at Old World Army Builder. Um, on if you put that into Google, you'll find it. Um, but uh, yeah, I found that it was really helpful because um, yeah, <laughs> online app home builders. Uh, as as a guy who spent most of his formative years with pencil and paper and a calculator, going through and uh, adding up all these different units and tweaking with uh, uh, magic items and things and stuff like that. Hours of my life. I've got. <laughs> I found. Um, I think a while back. I found a bunch of my old um, uh, school and college uh, notebooks that I had from when I was there, and uh, it's so funny. Like there's like pages of thermodynamics and and electromagnetism, and then there's like a bunch of pages of like X army. <laughs> like it'll be you'll be like all these massive. Um, long uh, uh, calculus equations, you know, differentiate, uh, differentials and integrals and things like that on like three or four pages and you turn over and it's like, Dreadlord, 130 points, 100 points of magic items and then 20 spearmen. <laughs> and I mean, every book, every one I came across had at least a few pages dedicated to the, uh, to the various armies I'd been writing. Um, I'd like to say at home, but... A lot of them were in lectures. <laughs> what can I say? I I I I'm not a, I'm not very good in the uh, academic world. Um, like whilst I know what, uh, how to do the thing, um, I get bored very quickly. Um, I also didn't help that at the time, I didn't realise that I had. Whilst I knew I had um, autism, I didn't know I had ADHD. Which meant trying to sit in lectures and just listen to a guy talk at me was very not good for me. Um, I did my best, but I just couldn't do it. But you plunk me down in a workshop, and bam, I can get it done. I remember when I was doing my Merchant Navy training in Glasgow, we were doing uh, uh, pneumatics and uh, hydraulics. 
And there's just something, I just have this, one of my autistic superpowers is if you plunk me down in front of a, any kind of like electronics or pneumatics or whatever, and you give me the schematics, and if you explain to me how the schematics work, so I know what the symbols mean, um, and then you say build this or find where the problem is in this, I can just skim it and fix it straight away. It just, I don't know how, I don't know how it's done, but my brain just does it. And I remember I, uh, we did the theoretical module of it. We had all these computers and we had to, well, they had programs where you could do all the, the um, modeling, all the things. And we had this big project that was going to last. We had a big double period on a Friday that was supposed to be for doing that. And we were supposed to last a month. We were supposed to go through this, this system, build the system, uh, make a few changes to the system that were laid out and fix a few things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe it'll help if you, if you pull the suits up like yeah, duh, duh, duh. But yeah so I remember they gave us this thing it's supposed to last like two months like it was like a whole term or whole half term uh, of work and I did it the first Friday and I just went boom there it is and I took it up to the lecturer and he said uh, he literally just, his exact words were F off I don't want to see you for the rest of the term because um, I'd just done it he was like there you go it's done I'll mark you down don't worry about attending you clearly got this um, and then I remember the next the next half we then went to the practical exams, the practical part, and uh, we did um, uh, we, we, again we had like you be given a bunch of problems and you give them the, the various pieces, and you have to put them together uh, and build the system, um, and because obviously there's not enough for everyone to do an individual one, you had to break into teams to do it, um, and. The, the lecturer noticed really quickly early on that, that that my team would just get it done like super fast it's just because again I just look at it and go Choom, and put it together so I got banned I literally got banned from the, the practical workshop because uh, I I'd, uh, I could just do it so anybody who did it, it was obviously I didn't need to be there because I, did, I didn't need to learn um, and the rest of my team weren't learning anything either because I just do it, you know. So he was like, "Get out! I will see you next term." But there's no point in you being here because you're not going to learn anything, and the people on your team aren't going to learn anything. And I hope you don't think I'm being big when I tell you this. It's a genuine story. It really, it shocked me when it happened. But it's just, it's one of those things. Sometimes to make up for all the crap that you deal with as a uh, an autistic person, sometimes God comes around, turns around, and says, "Yes, but you get a cool autistic superpower." Um, although, as Tom says, mine are bloody useless. Because mine are mostly... My, my major autistic superpower is the ability to remember what's in what white dwarf. Um, there's, about, uh, there's a stretch from... Uh, I want to say from issue 190 of White Dwarf to approximately the 300s where I can remember almost everything that's in them. Um, it's gone a bit rusty recently, but there was a point where... If you were said, came up to me and said, what's the battle report in White Dwarf 2XX? I could be like, this. <laughs> um, it's also the way I used to be able to tell like when models and stuff came out. Because I don't remember what year's stuff was released. Right? So I have no idea. I can't remember when things were released, but I can work it out if I can remember which White Dwarf it's in. Because for some reason, my reference point is White Dwarf 226, which is the release of the third edition of 40K. It has the cover art with the Black Templars, the cover art for the third edition on it, um, and it came with a free um, plastic dark elder warrior to paint, and it came out in October 1998. So that is my reference point. <laughs> so when I'm like, oh, this thing came out in issue 197, I'm like, okay, 226, back to 197, that's what, three, that's six, seven, eight, nine months, so that'll be 1997. <laughs> so this is, yeah, this is exactly how I measure <laughs> when things come out. Um, yeah, my, my super, super like, period when it comes to White Dwarf is... 190 to 255 that one I still have in my brain I know almost every one of those issues back to back 
or back to front. Um, yeah, and again, utterly useless in, 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 in the real world. Although for about a year, for a little while, it was useful. Um, I, I used to work briefly for Games Workshop. I probably mentioned this in the past, but for a while, I did work at head office in the design studio. I was lucky enough to work in the design studio with the awesomely talented miniatures design team. Um, but after a while, it trickled down that I knew these white dwarfs the way I did. Um, so I would occasionally get visited by members of the white dwarf team when they were looking for something, they were trying to look some, something up, I was effectively their Google for a little while. Um, they'd be like, what, what issue was there about a report? We know there's about a report between these two factions. And they're like, do you know which issue it was in? And I'd be like, uh, I want to say 277. They'd be like, awesome. And they'd go away and find it. Uh, yeah, that was quite funny. Being used as a sort of basic Google for a very, very oddly specific uh, set of facts. Um, it was quite fun. It was a good time. It was a good year. I spent a year in that team. Like one of the best years of my life. Um, but, you know, things change. And now I'm here. I've gone from selling goblins to kids to painting goblins for old people. <laughs> well, no, not quite. Uh, painting goblins for anybody who wants to watch. Um, that's it. I'll, I'll never escape the goblins. Yeah, this is great. I've been through a lot of trials and tribulations, but I'm really enjoying this new chapter. Um, and I'm glad I can share it with people as well. Um, like I said, I'm always about building communities because the more people that play, it's a selfish thing. The more I build a community, the more people play this game, the longer the game will continue to exist. <laughs> um, but in a more serious note, the community, the hobby community, that I've been part of now for the number of number of years. Would I ever want to escape the goblins though? I don't know. No. Uh, they're fun little chappies. They're evil, but they're, they're chaotically so. Um, and that's what makes them lovable. But yeah, as I said, no, when it comes to community, I've been part of this local community that I'm in, um, in the northwest of England, um, for phew, an awful long time now. Uh, I've bounced around the UK, and I've met people all over, but, yes, yeah, in West UK, yeah, so, but the people I've met, all, like, here, are some of the best people I've ever met anywhere, and, uh, I feel privileged to be part of this community, um, they're so supportive and so awesome, and, yeah, they, they're just, nothing, like I said, nothing builds hobby like hobby, um, and some of the best, but also some of the best friendships I've ever had have come from this, 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 this hobby. So being able to now take that community and hopefully extend it out across the awesome power of the internet is my, my big goal now. Um, to bring hobby to the masses. So, yeah. Yeah, no, me too, Mark. It's great. It's great seeing, like I said, we're all... We've all been around, we've all done things, and it's nice. I think this is a nice area. You know, there's a lot of people that want to help each other out here. Um, and it's probably a bit soppy for a late night, a little early to mid late night stream, but there we go. I'm just so happy to be part of it. Um, but yeah, we've made a lot, uh, already we think we've made quite a bit of progress on these, uh, on these goblins, a bit further than I thought even I thought we'd get tonight. Um, as we come to the end of yet of another stream, um, thank you all so much for joining us. Those people who have tonight, those of you who've been here all night, those of you who come in, you know, you're all welcome. Stay as long as you want. Um, for those people watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you very much. Please l drop a us a like, share, and subscribe, um, and all those wonderful uh, things you do on YouTube for those technically met me through I did yes uh, I met my my wonderful partner through giving her a painting lesson yeah so it went so well in fact I'm doing it again forever on the internet 
although I'm not looking for any, any more any more partners now. No, though, I've just got the one. That was the, yeah. I don't know whether it's the most successful or least successful painting lesson of all time. Um, maybe we'll, I'll have her on one night and you can, we can judge her painting as well. But no, she's awesome. She keeps me going. She's the whole reason I'm here doing this now. That's right, I'm going to make you embarrassed now. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, so those people on YouTube, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and look out for the awesome new content that we'll be sharing through this week. Um, for those of you on Twitch, if you haven't already, please drop us a follow. Um, and, and tell your friends all about this wonderful channel that you've discovered. Uh, if that's how you feel. Um, because we're so close to affiliate now. We are up to 35 followers. If we can hit 50 is the magic number. Um, like I say, when we hit 50, that really helps us out because it allows us to uh, monetize the channel, which will help bring you even more awesome content. But also, from your point of view, it will be allow us to add some awesome features. We'll be adding some. We've already got some custom emotes ready to go. Um, my friend James has made has already made a tangent emote. So when I go off on one of my crazy tangents, be that about the awesomeness of owl bears or how. Hollywood doesn't understand what a dragon is. Um, you can you can spam that in the chat and uh, let me, everyone know that I'm I'm back uh, off wandering off topic again. Um, also, some of my friends have suggested that we can add some uh, channel uh, rewards, such as get back on track, old man. Uh, so when I do go off on one of my tangents, you can uh, spend some of your channel points to. Uh, make me come back onto what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, be that painting, goblins, or whatever it is I'm doing. Um, so yeah, there'll be that's that's what we're hoping for. And it'll help again, it'll help grow this grow this community. Um, which is at the end of the day what I'm I'm really hoping for. So yeah, if you haven't already please drop us a follow. Um, tell your mum, tell your dog, if they've got a Twitch account, just come in, drop us a follow. Costs you nothing. Stop yelling at cloud clouds. Never. Old man yells at clouds forever. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but hopefully we can get to affiliate. We'll be able to add some really fun features. Um, and just add a bit more, a bit more, um, a bit more uh, excitement and, and fun and frivolity and other big words beginning with F to, to, to this, this, this stream and this experience. So I promise that's the last time I will uh, shout that out. But uh, I've got to remember to do it because, you know, that's, that's the way apparently. That is the, the uh, stream of foo, so to speak. And that's our big milestone is if we can get into affiliate. So I said, after that, Everything just take should hopefully we'll just we can get to affiliate we can reach more people because Twitch will start promoting us we can be like hey come check this weirdo out <laughs> um, yeah because then we can get to some of the other cool things as well some of the other rewards I want to get to where I want to start I want to create a an Onyx Dragon Space Marine chapter because uh, one of the things we're looking into doing is uh, starting a Patreon. Um, and uh, having rewards for both Patreon members and for Twitch subscribers, uh, one of which will be that you can, at certain levels, you'll be able to get a Space Marine painted by me in the chick colours to be determined of the Onyx Dragons Space Marines chapter. Um, these are all things we're looking forward to. We've got planned, we've got all these things in the works, but we have to wait until we've hit certain milestones, uh, unfortunately. Um, black, silver, of course, of course it's black, silver and red. red. We wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I've already got some feels out to get some uh, custom transfers made that will be the same as the logo for the stream. Um, that will be our shoulder pad symbol for the chapter. Um, and then I'm also thinking that maybe if we, if we can get a Patreon going, that at higher tiers we will. Uh, you'll be able to, if you really want to, Really want to help and support the channel. We will. Uh, you'll be able to get a character, a named character of the chapter, painted just for you. I said we've got all these things in the pipeline. 
but the first step is getting to getting to affiliate so 15 35 down 15 to go we're almost there right oh can we get the carrot stone on before we run out of time tonight or is that one of the many colors i've left at home what we got here rakar flesh come on oh. Is this about to bring our awesome progress with screeching halt? I think it is. So, sadly, yeah, that's bringing our progress to a halt. But, it looks like we might need to touch up the spearm halves a little bit. Just to give them, make sure they're nice and solid colour. So we can do that one more step. We can always go back in and do the, do the uh, rope work another time. I'm going to have to invest, I think, in a bigger paint carrying case. Because at the moment, I just have enough room for about 25, 30 paints. <gasps> oh wait, no, we have carrot stone. And magenta. Pfft, no magenta. Red, silver, and black only. This is the way. <laughs> yes. So we know how to do. No, we don't. But red, silver, and black are our magic colors. Also, magenta's kind of a red, I suppose. But it's not not as cool as regular red. Uh, yeah, no, I did. We did. I didn't leave it. I was getting confused. I was. Oh, hello, hello, honeycomb combat again. Thank you very much for bringing all your wonderful peoples across. Um, we for those of you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. It's raid time. Um, we are painting tiny little nerd goblins um, as part of our big army project here on Alex Drake Gaming. Um, if you if you want to see more, we're gonna be, we've got a, a little while to go yet tonight. We we try to get as much progress on these little five of them done. We've got some really cool stuff coming up for this army soon. Um, for those of you who know Warhammer, we've got some squiggly beasts which are awesome, giant inflatable sacks of teeth to paint for them. We've got some big trolls um, and all sorts of cool characters to go with these little Arr! angry little fellas. Um, but tonight we are just painting some basic spearmen. Um, we're just trying to see as, how much we, how quickly we can get these done. Um, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, welcome, Alex Dragon Gaming. Here we are painting. This is what we do: is we paint, we paint tiny men's. I'm great, thank you very much. Got a little uh, angry little guys. Yes, thank you, <laughs> Cheers, Mickey. Yeah. So yes, I'm doing really good. Thank you, Honeycomb Combat. Um, we've had a good, we've had a, a fun stream. Start off a bit struggled. We were, because I didn't get the new goblins in. We were painting some uh, Eldar, some forty k Eldar, some space elves. We were trying to paint a a, uh, a striking scorpion aspect warrior to go with my awesome Ulthway Eldar army. Uh, it was a bit of a bit of a slog because we weren't sure things weren't going as well as I was hoping. Um, but we did push through. We made it look cool. Uh, then we got back on some some of our other regular goblins, um, but yeah, like uh, like Noel says, if you like what we see here on the stream, please drop us a follow. We're we're really close to to the fifty we need for to hit affiliate. So if you if you if you don't mind and you like what you see here, please drop us a follow. Um, it's massively appreciated, especially on 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 when we as we're just getting started. Any momentum is always helpful. Um, but yeah, we're ending tonight's stream with the angry little dudes. Urgh. We managed to get their faces, their face work all done. We've nearly got all of the, all of the base coats on, and then we get to it's nearly time to hit the magic wash stage, and then we can tidy up all this because we're sort of trying to speed paint. We're not, we're not worried about uh, any kind of splashes on the black robes that these guys have got because it's so easy to go back in and fix. Although I'm realizing not only if I'm doing the rope around the chest, around the stomach, I should be doing the rope that's tying the uh, the spear point to its haft. Yeah, these guys are so much fun to paint. They're very so satisfying. They come out really quickly, and they have so much character to them. Um, and these are just the basic spearmen. These guys are just your basic dudes. These are like your basic ranked up guys, which you can see we've got the first two ranked. We painted those last week. Uh, and they are now, we can see a fully painted picture of them all ranked up and in a movement classic Warhammer Old World movement tray over on our social media at Onyx Dragon Gaming uh, on Twitter, Instagram and uh, Facebook.
But yeah, we, we, we were hoping tonight that we'd have new Night Goblins to paint. Because um, these the, the other models we've got for this army, paint them and give them stats. It should do what it usually does in game. So this is like, as somebody who's been playing for a long time, what usually happens is if you're playing with an army you've, you've had for a while, you might be fully painted or whatever, whenever you paint a new unit and you're super excited about it, it goes on the table and the first thing that happens is it dies. That is that is the law of miniature miniature painting is uh, and gaming is whenever you've got a super you just painted this awesome new thing and you're like ah oh, it's the best thing ever I'm really proud of this I finished the new army unit I'm gonna add it to my army and the first thing that happens is it will be killed straight away on it'll be the first thing to die when you put it on the tabletop um, this is why I paint entire armies at once uh, before they see the tabletop. Although this may also explain why they all die really quickly the first two times I use them. Because um, they're all new at that point, and it's the law. But anyway, yeah. So coming back to these Night Goblins, these are just... Like I said, these are just our basic guys. Good strategy, yeah. Exactly, it all dies one turn, you get that over with, and you play another game. And we've got the curse of the new, newly painted unit out of the way. And we can get back. back to this. That's why I try now to make sure I play at least one or two games with an army before I take it to an event. Because I used to take them, just paint them, spend all the time painting them, and then take them to an event, uh, to a tournament or something. Paint your friends, ah, see, that, that's, the, that, that's the secret tech. Be like, hey, I painted an army just for you. Just so I can, oh yeah, so I can, I can beat you with a painting curse. Um, I think I might call the judge on that one. But yeah, I try now, these days, I try and make sure that I get in at least one or two games before I take the army to, a, uh, to an event. So I can get any kind of painting curse, or, or, you know, over and done with before we get there. Um, but yeah, like, like I was saying, um, yeah, the Night Goblins, we've got some, oh, just, oh I keep saying about it, and I, and I want it to be here now. I just want them here now. It's the Squiggly Beasts, the giant we got, so we've got like units of guys mounted, so the units of these guys. It will never save from the, no, never save my, my my useless dice curse. No, it won't. Um, but uh, that I can make up for by throwing vast quantities of dice. Eventually, some of them have got to be sixes, right? Um, <laughs> although not not so much when with mine involved. Uh, but yeah, I've said I said I've been taking a lot all night, but I'm so excited to get the rest of this army in because we've got units of guys. Uh, with these guys mounted on the back backs of the squigs, like I was saying, squigs. These massive like halfway between a space hopper um and a piranha um if, if you want to imagine that so yeah but yeah, yeah one of the things my partner's done for me is she bought me the set of so blood bowl uh the game blood bowl which is basically like american football but with fantasy uh teams uh i got the vampires army the vampires team for my for my birthday uh and she got all the accoutrements to go with it so she got me the dice the the specific book like um issue of spike magazine that had all the rules in them but just to really take it to the next level she took each of the individual dice and wrapped them wrapped them up um and i i am refusing to unwrap them because that way no matter what i roll i can just say it was always it's just the best um it was the best result and they could never they can never fail me if i can't actually see what facing they are. Um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, I think my my opponents might have something to say about that, though. <laughs> Curse them. Right, where are we? So there we go. We've got all the. We've managed to get all of our base coats on. I think because because remember last last stream, I ran out of Agrix Earthshade. I had to run round to uh, Harlequin's Gaming to go and pick up some new borrow some. I made sure to go and buy a brand new pot before the stream. Didn't say we were having to run around and get a new paint this stream, did it? But, you know, one of these days I said I'll invest in a bigger paint case that can hold the entirety of the paint range that I need. Um, although I know I'll still forget one because that's how my brain works. I can sit and plan all day for a stream or anything really pack everything up uh, and go and be like, that's it, I've got everything, I've got this, I've got that, uh, got this, got the other, I forgot that last week, so I made sure, especially to remember that, I made sure I've got the plugs that I need to plug in all my gear, and, blah, 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 blah. and then I get there and I'm like, oh, nuts, I forgot this one thing. 
it always happens. It happens when I go away. When I go away, we go away on holiday, me and the missus, it's like, oh, yeah, I've got this, I've got that, I've got everything I need. What have I forgotten? Toothbrush. <sighs> or normally, in my case, for some reason, I always forget pyjamas. I don't know why. I remember, ta- I remember like, really esoteric things. Like, ah, oh, I need, like, a bow tie because we're going to some sort of black tie event and I remember that I've got that. Uh, and then I'll completely forget, like, something really basic, like socks. Um, it's just, yeah... I, I, I've, I've almost started planning for it in that, like, like I said today, I'm just giving you a space suit. Oh, yeah. For those who don't know, one of my favourite um, book series is The Expeditionary Force or X Force um, by Craig Allenson, um, which features an amazing character, one of the main characters, Skippy the Magnificent, an ancient elder, elder, a, elder species AI with an almost godlike intellect, but he cannot think of basic things. Like spacesuit, like the fact that humans need to breathe in space. So when they try to attack a, they try to come up with a, a way to attack an alien spaceship, and he's like, oh yeah, you just go across here into the docking bay and do this, and he's like, how are we going to breathe there, Skippy? <laughs> and he's like, crap. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a fantastic book series. I, I can I cannot recommend enough. Um, the first book in the series is called Columbus Day. It can be found anywhere good audio books can be found. Um, by Craig, it's called it's called Columbus Day by Craig Allenson. Um, it takes a little while to get get going, but as soon as you hit chapter ten and you meet Skippy, it, it there are now sixteen books in the series and one audio drama, and and I, I literally I cannot get enough of them. Um, every time, I'm like as soon as a new book's announced, I got it on pre order because they're the best. They're absolutely the best. The narrator R C Bray really brings them to life as well. Brings the character's life, especially Skippy. Um, I trust me. If you if you want a if you want a really good audiobook series to listen to, you, you, um, Expedition Force is definitely it. Um, if you've got free credits on your Audible account or whatever, I should I'd say make sure you check it out. Um, you will not regret it. And also, if you're someone like me who does a lot of painting, sitting down like this. The books are really long. The later ones, well, no, the, the first ones are of medium length, but the later ones, you can really get your money's worth out of them for a credit because they will last you a good few days. <laughs> um. so you're oh! Oh, that was my alarm for something completely unrelated, but I always forget to turn it off. But yeah, so it also has reminded me that we are now at the end of tonight's stream. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we've had some trials, we've had some tribulations, we've laughed, we've cried. We've ranted about the fact that Hollywood doesn't know what a fecking wyvern is. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Um, we've got to a great stage with these, with these five goblins. We've got all our base coats down. Um, like I said, hope keep it, keep your eyes peeled to social media. We'll keep it uh, along with updates. Yes, they do need to be listened to rather than read. Um, yeah, so keep uh, keep an eye on our social medias. We'll keep you updated with the vagaries of the warp travel as our our night goblin army wings its way towards as well as our Bretonians. Um But for the meantime, like I said, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, please, like I said, if you if you like what you see here. Drop us a follow. Follow us on social media under Onyx Dragon Gaming. You can literally find us now almost anywhere by typing in Onyx Dragon Gaming into Google. It will pop up with our various endeavours. Um, yeah, so again, that's it. I think we come to the end of yet another stream. Um, for those people who will be back, I will be back on Wednesday at 6 o'clock again. Um, I hope to see you all there. I uh, hope you all see you all there soon. And with that, I will say goodbye.